Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the fourth episode of the story in which Hiruzen takes charge and finds a way to fulfill Minato's dying wish. Much has changed in the Narutoverse since the clan heads and Danzo have joined forces to train Naruto. Naruto accepts his parents and clan's final wish to bring peace to the elemental nations. Join our smarter and more OP blonde knucklehead on his unique path to peace. This story is from Bjdakuch, please support him. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Kanoha Council's reply two days after Naruto delivered the Reikage's reply, the reply from the Tsuchikage also came in. The Kanoha Council had been deliberating for a day already before Naruto was called into the council room, the day before he took his genin exams. Naruto walked into the council room with dressed in a black battle kimono emblazoned with the Uzumaki and Namake's crests. For most of the civilian council, this was the first time they had seen him since the night of the Kyubi's attack. The civilian council still did not know the complete details of that night, nor the night of the Uchiha massacre. Most of them were neutral to slightly favorable. Naruto knew that he had the Higurashi support along with the support of Tuchi. When Tuchi built his restaurant, which was frequented by the clan heads, children and Hokage, the civilian council offered him a seat to replace a retired counselor. Naruto could only sense negativity from three people in the council room, Koharu, Mibuki and some fat guy he had never met. I have come in response to your summons, Hokage-sama. Said Naruto bowing to his Hokage and then nodding to the shinobi council. Mibuki cut in with a sneer, you are not yet a ninja, boy. You will show your civilian council the respect it deserves. Naruto ignored her completely and kept his eyes fixed on the Hokage. This incensed Mibuki to the point that Hiruzen forcefully shut her up with a burst of K.I. Naruto never understood how someone could claim to be important and powerful, then fold completely under a little K.I. This thought brought a smirk to Kurama who was ready to make his grand entrance. Ah, Naruto-kun. You have made things quite interesting over the last week, my boy. Once again, well done on your solo missions to Kumo and IWA. The responses we received spoke very highly of your professionalism and conduct. You honor me, Hokage-sama. This pleasant back and forth was once again interrupted by the fat civilian counselor. Hokage-sama, what possessed you to send this boy, not yet a ninja, to our two greatest enemies? Akui, that is none of your concern. Just accept that there are things you will not know. I say this to the whole civilian council, you are an advisory body. Please wait until I solicit your advice. I grow tired of these interruptions said the god of shinobi. He turned and looked at Naruto, Ai and Anoki have both consented to you exchanging letters with their chosen kunoichi. Both mentioned you motivating them to see past grudges and it seems you earned some faith. I will remind you to not to disclose any confidential information in your correspondence. There is a formal meeting set for after the third phase of the Chunin exams where the treatise will be finalized. Naruto acknowledged his Hokage's order with a nod, Hi, Hokage-sama. I will do as you say. Hiruzen then opened the first order of business with his council. The first step to peace has been made. In order to move forward, we will need to deal with Naruto-kun's application to the CRA. He applied a dual entry as the last of the Uzumaki and the last of the Namake's clans. Both clans are historical allies of the Leaf and have contributed greatly to our place atop the hierarchy of hidden villages. We will now take a vote on his enrollment. A second vote will be taken to an amendment he made to the conditions of application. Naruto-kun, please elaborate for the council. Honorable members of the council and elders, he looked at each clan head, elder and a couple of the civilians, I wish to restore my clans, but I refuse any demand regarding my future wives made by the council, or anyone else for that matter. I will marry, love and cherish each wife that I choose. The ninja clan heads know how I make this possible. If the second amendment is not approved, then I will withdraw my application to the CRA. I await your vote, 
Honorable Council. There were a couple cries of frustration and outrage from the civilian side, but Naruto paid them no mind. He spent his time making meaningful eye contact with the clan heads. Hiruzen spent ten minutes shutting the civilian council up before taking the vote. Both measures passed 173. Hiruzen brought order back to the room. We will now vote on whether to accept or reject the engagements of Kyumo and IWA, which are Samui, the adopted niece of the Rakage and the Rookie of the Year for her class in Kyumo, and Kuratsuchi Kamizura, the Tsuchikage's granddaughter and holder of the Yoden bloodline. Both girls have accepted by their own volition and written the responses to Naruto's letter. I now open the floor to question Naruto about his visit. Hayashi Hyuga stood first, Naruto-kun, it has been too long. I trust your judgment and it seems the visits went well. Do you believe we can trust Kyumo in this agreement? I admit that I still harbor a grudge from nine years ago. Hayashi Dano, it has indeed been too long. I was able to speak with the fourth rakage at length. You know about my ability, and I believe him to be genuine. So long as the leaf and I keep our word, he will honor his end of the deal. My father wrote about him in his journal and said that he is a man of high moral character, and I found that to be accurate. After Hayashi nodded in appreciation for Naruto's answer, Shikaku spoke up, what can you tell us about Anoki? Do you believe his intentions pure or not? Before I answer your question, Shikaku-sama, I ask the Hokage if I may bring out my partner for this mission. He is a much stronger sensor than I. The Hokage took a deep drag on his pipe and mentally prepared himself for this. He nodded to Naruto and told everyone to stand down, Naruto is going to perform a sanctioned jutsu. Naruto activated a tailless shroud and performed the Kyubi Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Kurama appeared next to Naruto and flashed a pointy, sly smile at the council. Of the twenty council members, only four knew about Q. Q told Sum. About himself after they had made love for the first time. She said as long as the sex was that good, she didn't really care. Six civilian council members passed out and Mibuki Haruno was screaming at the ANBU to kill the demon. Hiruzen gave a couple second of full-powered KI burst and shut the room up. Everyone, I know this is a shock to you. Q has been allowed this form by Naruto for the past two years. He has agreed to obey myself and Naruto-kun while in the village. His track record has been perfect, and I will hear no more from the civilian side of the council on this. Q, you were brought out to speak to the trustworthiness of the Tsuchikage, please proceed. Okay, Hiruzen. A clone of mine accompanied Naruto to see the old fence-sitter. Initially, it was all shock and a bit of rage. However, my kit won the old man over. I believe his intentions to be earnest. I believe he wants to see a fraction of the peace Naruto spoke of before he croaks. I would like to add that there will be resistance to this. I could sense negative energy from the human guards. I will be able to feel more when they arrive, but I believe we will have to deal with those unable to move past old grudges before the path clears up. If that is all, Hokage-sama. Danzo cut in. He had kept a proud eye on Naruto's track record, but he didn't know the Kyubi could be summoned out of the seal like this. If I may, did Naruto summon you? How can you be out of the seal? Is this your full form? asked an overly eager Danzo. Naruto knew they needed at least this much information, so he gave Q a nod. Kurama addressed the council once more, I care not for your human games, Danzo. I have seen the change in you since you started training Naruto. I commend you on that, it saved you from a brutal death by my claws. To answer your questions, Naruto does possess the Kitsune summoning contract and I am the boss summons of the Kitsune clan. This was not a summoning, but a variant of the Shadow Clone. Naruto retains the right to dispel me at any time. My power corresponds to the number of tails that Naruto pours into the formation of this body. With one tail of power, I equal most jonin in this room. That is all the questions I will answer at this time. 
With a final smirk at the civilian council, the QB returned to his seal laughing at the stupefied faces of the stupid civilians. It took almost an hour of questions, shouting, and blasts of killing intent to put that little display to rest. If Naruto couldn't tone it out and perform a comedic play-by-play -play with Kurama, he would have walked out of the council room. Finally, an exhausted Hiruzen closed the meeting. Naruto picked up the letters from Samui and Kuratsuchi and spent half an hour catching up with the clan heads. He would be taking a seat, or should he say a shadow clone will be taking a seat, when he gets promoted to Chunin. Naruto went to his favorite spot, Hokage Mountain, and sat down on his father's head to read. Kuratsuchi's Letter Dear Naruto-kun I find myself at a loss for words. I never expected to be offered up in a political marriage, especially not to the son of the yellow flash. The old fart put in a good word for you, which is mighty rare I might add. I do not know how or if this will work, but I do intend to give it a try. My name is Kuratsuchi Kamizura, I am the oldest daughter of the Kamizura clan. I am fourteen years old and will be taking my Chunin exam test with you. I like gardening and training with my lava jutsu. Yes, I have a Keikai Genkai. It is a recessive trait in my family. I look forward to sparring with you and exchanging notes on our jutsu. I heard you have a very high fire affinity. Gramps told me about the fox. I guess I won't know until I meet him, but I have known Uncle Han and Rashi my whole life. Jinchuriki don't scare me if they can control the biju, and it seems like you have pretty good control. So don't worry about that. I guess I should address the elephant in the room. I do not know how I feel about you planning to have multiple wives. I am a rather Alan kind of girl. I will promise the same as the last, I will try for the sake of our relationship and our villages. That is really all I can say about it. Your letter was really sweet, and I look forward to more of the same. With affection, Kuratsuchi Kamizura, well kit, that's about as good as you're going to get by meeting a girl through a letter. Naruto nodded his agreement. He was happy. It felt like he was starting to see the fruits of his labor. He went to bed exhausted from the stupid council. Ah, to be genin. Again? Naruto passed his genin exams with ease. He couldn't believe that was all it took to make genin. He agreed to meet everyone out for a celebration at Ichiraku's and was walking there before he was distracted by a flood of memories. He cursed as he sent a shadow clone to Ichiraku's in his place. During his exams, Mizuki reeked of hate and desperation. So, Naruto got curious to see why he was so desperate and dispatched a clone captain to spy on him. Said clone captain just dispelled as Mizuki was leaving the Hokage Tower with the Forbidden Scroll of Seals. Naruto took off after Mizuki, following the directions his clone had given him. Naruto tracked him to a forest just outside of Konoha by an abandoned shack. He walked up on Mizuki, with his new Hishiate shining proudly on his right bicep. Naruto had adapted a head wrap like Q, because he thought it looked so much cooler than a shiny piece of steel. Hiya, Mizuki team, what bring you out here on this fine summer evening? Chirped an excited Naruto. Mizuki was sweating due to his escape, but it seems his night was going to get better. He would get to pay this brat back for his humiliation. What the fuck are you doing out here, brat? Go home play ninja. Snarled back a pissed off ex teacher. Oh, Mizuki team. You have been playing at being a ninja your whole pathetic adult life. Do you need another ass whooping before I take the scroll of seals back to Gigi? That was it, now this brat must die. Mizuki pulled out a Fuma shuriken and launched it at Naruto. He sped behind the shuriken to take advantage of the opening it would give him. However, when the shuriken kept going through Naruto and all Mizuki hit was a cloud of smoke, he was confused. A shadow clone? No way a fresh genin knows that. Naruto took advantage of this confusion to zip on over to Niko and her new squad since they had just arrived. Niko Taishu, Conrad's on the promotion. Hey, I need your help. 
Can you please pick a number between 1 and 3? Uh, hi, Naruto. We are after the traitor Mizuki. And, uh, 3 I guess. Replied a very confused Nico. Wait your turn, Nico Taishu. You can have him when I am done. Damn I was really hoping you said one. Anywho, be back in a jiffy. Naruto said before disappearing in a windshunshun. Kuma, of all people, couldn't hold back a snort. It's not Kuma's fault, he had missed Kitsune terribly, so when Kuma got to see Kitsune, the genuine article, it brightened his day up. A Naruto reappeared behind Mizuki with his hands pointed and held together like a gun. The Naruto clone loaded wind chakra into his fingers and whispered, Futon, 1000 years of death as it plunged its chakra enhanced fingers into Mizuki's ass. The startled Mizuki went flying, which is rather problematic in a forest. He crashed and crushed his way through several trees before falling nearly dead in a heap. The real Naruto strolled over to the scroll of seals and shuddered as the clone's memories wormed their way into his mind. He had tried to block that clone's memory recall, but sadly it didn't work. Now Naruto had the overwhelming urge to go and wash his hands. Before heading back to the Hokage Tower he called out to the captain of the new team row, all yours, Niko Senpai. It was awesome seeing you again. Don't be a stranger, Janna. With a wave and a swirl of wind Naruto left a smirking Niko, a smiling Kuma and two newbies that didn't know what the fuck was going on. The squad secured Mizuki and took him over to Anko, who had just received her tandy jacket and was more than happy to take a broken Mizuki into her playroom. Naruto didn't make a big fuss when he dropped the scroll of seals on the Hokage's clean desk. He walked in and could smell what his grandfather figure was smoking. He idly noticed that most of the paperwork was done and there were two shadow clones finishing it up. Hiruzen sat with his feet reclined on the desk, puffing his pipe and reading an orange book. Shadow clones really made a happier Hokage. Gigi, Niko took Mizuki to Tandy after I hit him with Kakashi's 1000 years of death, futon version, anyway I gotta run. Just throw that on my mission tab. Brank should cover it. A clone will bring my full report by. Janna. A bemused Hiruzen filled out a mission form for Naruto. The only genin to start his career with two. Solo a ranked missions and a solo brank. I fear for his genin team if he keeps this up. Genin team 7 when Naruto heard that he got Sasuke and Hinata on his team, team 7, he was happy and concerned. His team practically screamed, come kidnap and ransom me. Oh well, he would just have to make sure Sasuke and Hinata were up to snuff. He couldn't tell them about ANBU, but at least they already knew some of his skills. As soon as he heard his Jonin sensei wasn't here yet, he tasked a clone captain with finding Kakashi. He got a ominous feeling that he was going to have to do everything for his bum of a brother figure slash sensei. A clone appeared in a swirl of wind with a Kakashi reading his orange book. The clone dispelled as soon as it dropped off its package. My first impression of you all is. I hate you. Kakashi drawled out in a lazy tone looking right at Naruto. Kakashi continued, Roof, five minutes, go. Naruto, Sasuke and Hinata all used Shunshin to get there. Naruto had taught them the technique because he was so tired of having to walk everywhere with them during his time at the academy. At least they both appreciated learning a new jutsu from him. When the three appeared in front of Kakashi a couple of seconds after he arrived, Kakashi hated his life. First, his little brother forces him through a joint shunshin, multiple times he may add, to get to the academy. Now the damn brats won't even give him five minutes to read his precious book. Intros, go. Mumbled a depressed Kakashi. Naruto kicked off, well you all know a bit about me. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, here. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you guys that yet. The Yandame was my dad. I will tell you this too, he sealed the QB into me at birth. Y'all can meet him later, he is sleeping right now. 
I like my family, friend, and training. I dislike traitors and a certain masked Uchiha bastard. Sasuke's head snapped up at this. How does he know about the masked Uchiha that killed my dad? And why does he hate him, thought Sasuke as a dark aura began to surround him. Naruto picked up on Sasuke's negative emotions, so he continued. My dream is to become Hokage and bring peace to the elemental nations. Yup, that's pretty much it. Hinata-chan, why don't you take it from there? Hinata smiled at Naruto, blushed then began, Um, I am Hinata Hyuga. I love my clan and training with my mom. I dislike the caged bird seal that divides my clan. My dream is to become a good clan head and eliminate the use of the caged bird seal. Dot. Naruto smiled inside at this. He learned how to dispel seals like that in Fuenjutsu Mastery, level 8. He could totally do it, but he needs to earn some political clout first. One thing is for damn sure, he won't let Hinata, nor Hanabi, get that damned seal. He would rather let Kyubi eat every single clan elder than let that happen. Ah, thanks Kit. If you do decide to go that route, I would be more than happy to comply. Naruto ignored Kurama and listened in to Sasuke. Instead, Sasuke had withdrawn more after his father's death. He would have to reach out to Aunt Mikoto and offer his help. I am Sasuke Uchiha, I like tomatoes and training. I hate the same guy Naruto does. My dream is to restore the Uchiha clan's honor and make my Kachan proud. That was a lot nicer than Naruto was expecting. Naruto looked at Kakashi who had been reading his book, Kakashi Sensei, your turn. Naruto put extra emphasis on Sensei to try and drive the point home that he was supposed to be the Sensei of the team. Oh, fine. Kakashi Hitaki, ex-NBU captain. I like the ANBU and reading. I hate brats and traitors. You don't need to know about my dreams. Okay, good intros. We'll see you tomorrow at training ground 7 at 6 a.m. for your true genin exam. It is going to be a combat exam, so don't eat or you will puke. Jana. Before Kakashi could go, Naruto grabbed his hand and whispered into his ear. Kakashi, consider this a standing promise. If you are ever more than 15 minutes late, I burn one book for every 10 minutes you are late. You represent the ANBU, get your shit together. He turned to his team, leaving a wide-eyed Kakashi staring at his back, Ramen sound good? My treat, I just got paid. Both team members accepted the invite so they could talk about the genin test. They headed to Ichiraku and got settled in. After eating their food, Naruto started. Okay guys, I am going to be upfront with you. There is a lot that I cannot tell you. What I can tell you, I will over time. I will be blunt. Me being a genin is political move by the Hokage. I do not say this to downplay your skills or to say that I am better than you. I missed both of you guys over the last three years and I really want my friends back. Hinata picked up on that, we missed you too, Naruto-kun. You said you had the QB sealed into you, is that the other chakra I see in that seal? Yup, I am surprised it took you this long to ask, Hinata-chan. I wanted to tell you for a long time but Gigi said that I couldn't until we were genin. Sasuke thought the QB thing was interesting, but he wanted to know how Naruto knew the man in the orange mask. Hn. You said you hate the man that killed my father, why? Naruto knew this was coming, he had an answer ready. He just hoped it was enough for Sasuke. Your dad was important to me, Sasuke. Not only was he one of my father's best friends, but he went out of his way to teach us. I owe him a lot, but that is not the only reason. That man attacked my father and mother the day I was born. Suffice it to say he has caused a lot more trouble than what happened to your father. I know because Itachi told me. Sasuke gave the HN that said he understood, and he had to think on it. How about this, Sasuke? You train with me and when we get strong enough, we each get half of him? 
Ah, there it was. This thought brought a light back to Sasuke's eyes and a whisper of a smile crept up on his face. You got a deal, Ruto. I am. Going to hold you to that. Naruto threw on a gigawatt smile, sure thing, brother. You have my word. So, you better keep up, got that? He held out his fist to Sasuke, who returned the bump with a smirk on his face. Just wait. I activated my Sharingan a while ago and have been waiting for a rematch. Looking forward to it, bro. By the way, eat breakfast tomorrow. What Kakashi said wasn't an order, more like an intimidation tactic. Alright, see you guys bright and early tomorrow. The night came and went. At 5 a.m. Naruto woke up and ate. He created a two clone captains to handle his research on the Hiration, two captains to go to his training ground and practice the Raisingan and two groups to study Anko's cursed seal. He was so close to being able to safely remove the damned. For those wondering, flashback, a week after entering the academy. Naruto was bored out of his mind in class. The only reason he even came to this cursed place was to hang out with his friends. He retreated from the boredom of Iruka's lecture into his mindscape. Sup, Karama. You said that your half left me a present, care to give me a clue? Go to your hallway and look for a door that shouldn't be there. Naruto did as he was instructed and enjoyed his stroll down memory lane. As he walked past the first formed doors, he noticed a door he hadn't seen before. A black door with yellow embossing and the Namikaze clan symbol on it labeled Minato Namikaze. Without hesitating, Naruto kicked the door open to check it out. Inside Naruto found an organized collection of his father's memories. Like a highlight reel of his father's life. Naruto stayed in there until a smack on the head came from outside. It was Iruka and the classroom was pretty much empty. So that is the look you make when you aren't paying attention. I got you now, Naruto. Said a smug Iruka. Jeez, Iruka-sensei. Go talk to the damned Hokage already. I can't be trifled to deal with this shit. I was in the middle of something really important. Replied Naruto in a more irritated tone than Iruka had ever heard. Naruto, is everything okay? It's not the Kyubi, is it? No, Sensei. Suffice to say I will learn far more than I ever would from the academy when I have that look in my eye. I finished the academy curriculum when I was five, for Kami's sake. A sheepish and confused Iruka resolved to see the Hokage. After his visit to the old man, Iruka chose not to bother the blonde enigma again. After Iruka had yanked him out of his father's door, Naruto spent his nights for the next few weeks watching his father's memories. They made him feel whole, like the other side of his family tree, that was full of question marks, was suddenly filled out. Naruto watched with rampant emotions as his father rescued his mother from Kumo, his fight against the IWA army, him donning the Hokage hat and finally his mother telling Minato she was pregnant. When the memory went black and picked back up with Kushina. Hovering over an unconscious Minato, Naruto laughed himself silly. This was more than he could have ever wished for, thanks, Q. You're welcome, Kit. He also got the theory of his father's most famous jutsu from the memories. Unfortunately for hordes of shadow clones, this meant developing a lightning affinity. After three months, Naruto was close. He had gotten the hang of the second lightning chakra nature exercise two weeks ago. The first exercise was crinkling a leaf with lightning chakra. He was considered proficient at this exercise when he could shrivel the leaf in under a second. The second lightning exercise was arcing lighting between his fingertips without electrocuting himself. The advanced stage of this exercise was channeling it from various body parts and one of his hands. It all revolved on how to create a chakra circuit in his body for the lightning to flow naturally through. All that was left was practice, then he would bug Kakashi to teach him the next lightning nature exercise and he should have the Hiration down. The Raisingan was easy by comparison. 
watching his father do it so many times and getting access to his notes on it made it simple enough. It took two days to get the first fully formed Raisingan. Then it was just a matter of reducing the time to conjure it, fluctuate its power level and try to learn the Odom Raisingan variant. End of flashback. Naruto walked into training ground 7 at 5.45 a.m. He laid back on one of the three training posts and closed his eyes. Ten minutes later, he awoke with a yawn to Hinata's greeting. Good morning, Hinata-chan, Sasuke. Replied a sleepy Naruto. I am going to tell you now, I know Kakashi pretty well. Don't take anything he says at face value. I want one of you to take point on this. I don't want to stunt your growth by doing everything for you. A growl escaped Sasuke's throat. It was obvious to him that Naruto was much stronger. He had to catch up. HN, Hinata you okay with me showing this dobe how it's done? Um, okay, Sasuke-san. I will be counting on you. Oi, team. I will follow your orders today, but you call me dobe again and test be damned, we will hash this out now. Bring it on, dobe. Naruto made one hand sign and a shadow clone appeared holding a kunai to Sasuke's neck. Naruto, still in his reclined position decided to nip this in the bud. Sasuke, as I said yesterday, you are my friend. However, that is the last time you will refer to me as, Dobe. I will train you and make sure stronger, but do not make the mistake of thinking you will get there overnight. I have had a minimum of 200 shadow clones working constantly on my soft skills for the past five years. I do not wish to put you down, brother, but as the container of the Kyubi no Kitsune it demands that I maintain a certain level of respect. Sasuke went from a scowl, to wide-eyed. He didn't know how to respond to this, so he settled with the HN, that means, fine, I get it. Kakashi chose the moment to show up. Ma, ma, let's calm down. We are perfectly calm, sensei. You cut it close though. Ten minutes late. Five more minutes and paradise would have met a fiery end. Kakashi's lone visible eye widened in panic. Let's not be hasty, Ototo. Anyway, it is time for your test. You have one hour to get these bells from me. Everyone except Naruto come at me with the intent to kill. Naruto, I am restricting you to support only. This isn't how I would usually run this test, but I want to test your teamwork. If you two can't get the bells in one hour, then I am banning Team 7 from eating at Ichiraku's for one month. Begin. It was Naruto's turn for his eyes to widen. Nobody threatens his ramen. He decided to go get marching orders from Sasuke, who was hiding pretty poorly nearby. Hinata wasn't much better. Naruto left a clone to shoot the shit with Kakashi while the real Naruto approached Sasuke's hiding place. I don't need your help, Ruto. I want to do this on my own. Sasuke said irritably from his hiding spot as Naruto walked up on him. Bro, I am not risking my ramen for this shit. I will let you take equipment from my pack then I will just watch. How does that sound? Naruto gave Sasuke his pack and one hint, the papers in pouch 3 are paralysis tags, I recommend you at least include Hinata, this is a team exercise after all. With that, Naruto jumped into a tree to watch the show. In typical Sasuke fashion, he tried his hand at the onion Found himself buried up to his neck and got saved by Hinata. Then, he reluctantly gave Hinata a paralysis seal and told her to get in the tree line and wait for the signal. He also told her to close her eyes and deactivate her dojitsu once she was in position. Sasuke charged Kakashi again and launched a fairly large fireball at him. Kakashi casually sidestepped it but wasn't ready for the flash tags that appeared in the blind spot created by the fireball. With a loud bang, both parties were blinded. Hinata sprinted to Kakashi and slapped the paralysis seal on him. Kakashi was stuck rubbing his eyes as Hinata casually removed the two bells and gave one to Sasuke. 
The two smiled at Kakashi once Naruto decided to undo the paralysis seal. Damn it, Naruto. Flash tags and paralysis seals? Kakashi said in an exasperated tone. You don't threaten a man's ramen, sensei. Besides, I just gave Sasuke my pouch. He came up with the plan himself. Replied a cheeky blonde. Hinata decided to pitch in her support, it was a good plan, Sasuke-san. Thank you for telling me to cover my eyes beforehand. I still remember how much those flash tags hurt with the Byakugan active. Naruto's hand immediately went to the back of his head, sorry about that, Hinata-chan. At least you didn't get painted. Sasuke put two and two together to make four. You, you were the demon prankster. Thank you Captain Obvious. Naruto said in a playful voice. My room smelt like chickens for months after that, you. Bastard. His voice was hysterical which made Naruto start laughing with Kurama in his mind. Hey, don't blame me for your clan's shitty security. It was a mission from Hokage Jiji. It was a mission to infest the clan compound and houses with chickens? Well, I took some artistic liberties. A man must take some liberties while channeling his creativity, Sasuke. The real mission was stealing your clan scroll. The chickens were simply part of the side mission and an effective distraction. The battle of words continued between an irate Sasuke and a jovial blonde. The back and forth continued until Kakashi dismissed them for the day. That day set Sasuke's set his personal record for the most words said in a day, which Naruto shared with Mikoto, Itachi and Shursue over dinner that night. Kurama informed Naruto that all of Sasuke's ramblings combined added up to an hour of talking. Kami, babysitting is hard work. Thought the cycloptic Jonin. Little did Kakashi know that Naruto was sharing that exact same thought. Dranks the next day, Kakashi managed to show up on time again and train Team 7. Naruto chose to use the word train very lightly in this instance. All he did was make them do the most basic of warm-ups and a couple of team-building drills. Naruto was glad he had his shadow clones or else he would never learn anything at this rate. Sasuke mirrored his frustrations and the ever-gentle Hinata was annoyed by Kakashi's lack of apparent interest. After the team-building exercises, Kakashi gave them one hour to grab lunch and meet at the Hokage Tower to collect their first mission assignment. Sasuke and Hinata were excited to complete their first mission, while Naruto groaned internally. Kurama answered the groan with a hearty, deep-throated chuckle. Ha, huh, Kit. I decided to tag along today just to get a first-hand look at their faces when the old monkey gives them their first mission. Cease your bitching, this is going to be priceless. Have a clone ready with that camera of yours. Fine, Q. I got you. You do realize that we will have to do the chores too, right? This didn't both Kurama, he planned on bailing as soon as the kid got his mission. He had a feral dog lover to go hunt down, after all. Plus, Kuramaru agreed to a spar after Q attends to his master, which got Kurama excited. Even though Kuramaru was strong, the leader of the Inazuka Ninken pack had yet to best Kurama with one tale of power. The last spar was close, but Kurama's fox form was able to get Kuramaru to submit. Submission was the only option one had left when sharp canines were pushing down on one's throat. It still got Kurama's chakra pumping though. Kit, I will blow this Kami Forsaken seal up before I let you drag me along for these so-called missions. I am here for the photo opportunity. Then, you will release me so I may go attend to my mate and her pup. A devious smile flitted across Naruto's face, oh? And what do I get in return for sparing you from? The monotony of dranks? And don't say something boring like I will get to stay alive, we both know that is an empty threat. Kurama growled menacingly from his perch on the rock overlooking the lake. Don't mess with me, brat. The great Kyubi no Kitsune will have not play servant to lazy humans that are too fat to tie their own shoes. 
In return for letting me out for this and all future Drank missions, I will teach you how to enhance your fire jutsu with Foxfire. Your body is finally developed enough to start using it without spontaneously combusting. A happy chirp was all Kurama received in response, deal. After lunch, Team 7 walked into the mission room and saw Irika sitting at his desk, behind a stack of mission scrolls. It was his duty to pass out the sea and drank missions when he wasn't at the academy. A shadow clone of the Hokage sat next to Irika, although Naruto and Kakashi were the only ones that could tell it was a clone. Ah, Team 7. It is good to see you. Are you here for your first mission? We have a fine selection today. The voice of the Hokage carried across the hall and was filled with a playful mirth. Hiruzen noticed two shadow clones blur away from Naruto carrying cameras as he said this. Hi, Hokage-sama. Team 7 is reporting to collect its first mission. Irika-san, what are our options today? Kakashi replied in a tone that carried a no-so-hidden mirth. Irika happily replied, since he was in on the joke. Well, Kakashi, we have weeds that need to be pulled from a garden, parcel deliveries from the clinic to patients around the village, a field that needs to be plowed and the daimyo's wife's cat is missing again. What will it be? As Sasuke and Hinata's mouths dropped open in disbelief, two flashes and clicks came from behind the Hokage. The two Naruto clones brought the Polaroid pictures to Naruto, who put them into a seal on his shirt before Sasuke could snatch them away. Man, that was better than expected. Kakashi-sensei, we will take all of the missions Iruka mentioned. Team 7 is going to get through the drank quota ASAP. Naruto said through fits of laughter while holding his sides. Ruto, what do you mean by quota? And they can't be serious. Those weren't missions, those are chores. Sasuke said in an elevated tone of voice that approached a scream. Now, Sasuke-kun. Dranks are a rite of passage for fresh genin. They help the ninja keep the favor of the villagers, support our budget and build teamwork. The quota is that all teams must complete 40 drank missions before qualifying for crank missions. Replied an amused Hokage clone as it puffed on a pipe. Hn, if you say so, Hokage-sama. Ma, ma, Sasuke. Show respect to your Hokage. Irika, would it be alright if we took those four missions? Sure, Kakashi. Are you certain you will be able to get them done today? Irika was concerned. It was already noon, so it didn't leave much time to get the missions completed. Naruto answered for Kakashi, it will be fine. Irika sensei Team 7 will be the number one genin team in no time. Naruto knew it was important to motivate Sasuke if he didn't want to listen to him bitch and moan all day. Kakashi took the scrolls from Iruka, and the team left the mission hall. Naruto dispatched a clone captain to handle the medical deliveries. Team 7 decided to plow the field first, since that would be the hardest mission. Naruto let the team struggle through working at a slow pace for a while. He was waiting for the cue he knew would be coming from Sasuke shortly. Kakashi was simply watching the genin from his perch in the tree, reading his smut. It didn't take long. Sasuke got frustrated fifteen minutes in and blew up. Kami damn it. I can't believe this is a mission. Plowing fields, what good will this do us? How will doing civilian chores do anything for our teamwork or prepare us to fight other shinobi? This is a fucking joke. The frustrated screams of Sasuke were exactly what Naruto had been waiting for, now it was time to nail the delivery. I know what you mean bro. This is boring. Why don't we have some fun while doing it? At the confused look from Hinata and Sasuke, Naruto channeled a bit of wind chakra through the blades of the plow. Then he focused chakra throughout his legs and took off at a sprint down the length of the field. Dust, debris, and chunks of grass flew out of the dust cloud created by Naruto. When the dust settled, a complete row was left neatly plowed in the blonde's wake. If we are forced into doing these civilians' chores, why not do them like a ninja, 
asked Naruto as he huffed a bit from the exertion, before he started choking on all the dust hanging in the air. Naruto got three intrigued looks from Team 7 before Sasuke attempted to copy what Naruto just did. It took him about twice as long as Naruto, and his row wasn't as neatly plowed because he didn't have wind chakra, but he did get a row done. Nice work, bro. Next time try channeling some of your lightning chakra through the plow. It will work better than your fire chakra for this. Hinata-chan, your water element should be fairly effective as well. Naruto cried out from across the field. Team 7 completed a normally full-day job in just under 45 minutes. Naruto turned weed-picking into an agility exercise and Team 7 cleared out the garden in 15 minutes. Now, the unholy cat was the only thing left. Naruto had sent out a clone team to scout for Tora earlier. They could have captured the cat, but Naruto knew that this was the best team-building exercise of all the drank missions. So, instead of capturing the cat, Naruto's clones tracked it and dispelled periodically to let Naruto know where the cat was. He informed his team of the cat's position and laid out his plan. Tora was a sneaky tabby cat. He reveled in his mission to keep tabs on Konoha for the Niko clan. His side mission was to find a worthy summoner for the Niko clan. He had been looking for the right summoner for well over a decade now and had no luck. He ran away so these genin would have to chase him, which allowed him to test the new ninja hopefuls. Plus, it allowed him to get away from that overbearing, perfume-laden woman. She was Tora's least favorite part of the mission to spy on Kanoha. Alas, a decade worth of genin had not provided any potential summoners and Tora was starting to lose hope. Currently, Tora was doing his usual path through the training grounds to inspect the genin teams. He really hoped this batch was the one. However, he couldn't escape the nagging feeling that someone was watching him. This feeling started two hours ago, but he couldn't sense anybody nearby. Whoever was following him was good. Now, two more chakra signatures came into his detection range and were taking up positions on his flanks. Tora got ready for the fun that was sure to come. Hinata and Sasuke followed Naruto's directions to training ground 3. They spotted the cat in the tree line and moved to flank. This is Princess, I am in position. Hinata's shy voice came through the radio headset. This is dark and broody, I fucking hate you Naruto. I am in position. Don't be like that, bro. You get to choose the names next time. Sunshine is in position. 3, 2, 1, go. Naruto chirped across the radio waves. Hinata and Sasuke darted from their cover and raced to Tora's position. The sneaky cat dodged Sasuke's lunge and vaulted off of his butt, over Hinata's head, and into a tree. The cocky demon cat cast a taunting smirk at the two genin and was about to take off when it felt a hand play something on its back. Tora was pissed, it couldn't even move. His whole body was paralyzed, and this human brat was taunting him with that damned smile of his. Then, Tora was given to the girl and the soft scent of lavender met his nose. Her eyes were gentle, and her petting was heavenly. Hinata carried Tora and pet him all the way to the Hokage Tower. Tora liked this girl. Until she handed him to the daimyo's wife. Then all the air was squeezed out of his lungs and the struggle to escape the smothering began anew. A dirty, tired but happy Team 7 reported all missions complete to Irika at 3.30pm. Irika was baffled. This genin squad just did four drank missions in just over three hours. Irika looked up and saw Kakashi beaming with pride. Kakashi noticed Irika looking at him and just cast a smug look. Have five more ready for us tomorrow. We will stop by to pick them up at the same time. Good night, Irika. Team 7 collected their pay and left the Hokage Tower. Naruto stopped outside the tower. Hey guys, it's still pretty early. Want to come to my house? I have presents for you. After receiving eager nods from Hinata and Sasuke, they headed to the Namike's estate. 
Naruto's clone captains could be seen working with their squads as they entered the compound. It blew Team Seven's collective mind as they watched ten Naruto clones holding us Rasengans of various sizes. Then there were forty clones. Paired up in twos, having full-speed sword fights. Just how much chakra do you have, Ototo? Kakashi asked in amazement. Oh, last I checked I have about twice the chakra Gigi does. But I make these clones every day by borrowing some of Q's chakra. It makes them last longer. With Q's chakra, I have more chakra than all Kanoha Jonin combined, but I can only use about a fifth of it right now. The casual manner of Naruto's response just deepened Team Seven's shock. They entered the house, greeted Tsubaki and headed into his father's study. Naruto took a couple of minutes to key them into the security system and then laid out his plan for them. Okay, my first gift to each of you are gravity and weight seals. These allow you to increase the efficiency of your training by making pretty much everything harder. They will increase your chakra reserves because your body will passively take chakra to compensate for the increased difficulty. Um, Ototo, are you sure that is safe? Yes, Kakashi-sensei. I have worn gravity and weight seals since I was eight. Tsunade Bakon taught me enough medical jutsu that I will be able to monitor and adjust them safely. Sasuke was excited, this is exactly what he had been waiting for. This was one training method that made Naruto stronger. He couldn't wait so he stepped forward. You can do me first, Ruto. Huh, I knew you would be excited, bro. Before I do this, you both need to agree that you will not show the seals to other people. This is Uzumaki Fuenjutsu, therefore it falls under my clan's arts. I do not want it being copied by those I do not trust myself. Both Jenin and Jonin Sensei nodded their consent. Okay, I will need access to forearms, calves, sternum and back. Hinata-chan, I know that will be embarrassing for you, but I promise it is only to apply the seals. You can keep your wrappings on. It. It. It's alright, Naruto-kun. I, I, I trust you. Stuttered out Hinata as she was removing her baggy beige jacket. Naruto created two clones, one of them hinged into Naruko, Naruto's female alias. Naruko applied the seals to Hinata, Naruto thought she would be more comfortable with a girl applying her seals. Once the gravity seals were on, Naruto activated them. Kakashi barely reacted, but the other two's shoulders hunched a bit. Okay, this is level one. You will not attempt to adjust these on your own until I give you the go-head. In case of emergency, make the boar hand sign and focus your chakra to the seals. To reactivate them, the monkey hand sign and focus on putting chakra into the seals. I have set the maximum to level 1 for now. Get used to it and we can reevaluate after one month. After getting nods from his team, he brought out the next present. We have been working together since we were children. I know your chakra natures and preferences. You are my teammates, so I wanted to share the Uzumaki Elemental Chakra Control exercises with you. Sasuke, this scroll is fire and lightning. Hinata, this scroll is water. Kakashi, I have allowed you access to my father's study to start studying the Hiration. It is a lightning-based jutsu. Kakashi's loan I bugged out when he heard this, thanks, Naruto. That is quite generous of you. Are you sure you want to let that technique outside the clan though? Naruto waved him off. My dad's journal said he planned on teaching you. Plus, you will have to send a shadow clone here every day for the next couple of years to master it. You will have to follow the same steps I did in Fuenjutsu, to create your own beacon seal. Then you will have to have high mastery over the lightning element, which you already have. Finally, you will have to practice. My clones can tell you how painful that can be. I have lost thousands of clones practicing over the last three months. Kakashi looked mortified. Thoughts like, did he care about the Hiration that much? Is it even worth it? And troublesome, 
flashed through Kakashi's head. He was brought out of his musings when the blonde asked him to teach the advanced lightning control exercise. Evidently, not many Uzumaki had the lightning element, which meant Naruto couldn't find it in the clan scrolls. Kakashi that it was a fair trade. With many thanks to Naruto for his generosity, Team 7 left his compound. Wave arc, with a twist Team 7 then spent the next five weeks and knocked out five dranks per day. By the end of their fifth week, they completed their 100th drank mission. They had actually had fun competing throughout the missions. Hinata was surprisingly quick with her hands, so she managed to win a few times when it came to tasks like picking weeds, painting fences and organizing various things for various shop owners. Sasuke liked the physical dranks. Most of the farming tasks became strength and agility competitions between Sasuke and Naruto. Naruto would set his gravity seals to level 5 to make it fair. Hinata would do her part in these missions, but she couldn't keep up on the strength requirements. Level 6 gravity still made Naruto feel like he was being crushed and super lightheaded, so Tsunade and Kurama had forbidden him from using it. They thought he would have to go through puberty before his body could take the strain. Team 7 became famous among the civilians. The normal bitching and moaning that could be heard by Genin squads doing the missions was absent during Team 7 missions. They were the exact opposite. They were lively, polite, and competitive. The civilians that requested the mission started watching the games the Genin made from the mission. The back and forth between Sasuke and Naruto made it entertaining enough. This high praise reached the other Jonin sensei, and they all marveled that Kakashi was such an effective sensei. If they only knew. Hiruzen watched Team 7 enter his office. He had been keeping his eye on this all-star genin team. That is why he had no qualms about allowing Team 7 to be the first rookie genin. Assigned a crank. Ah, Team 7. I must say, you are the talk of the town. Kakashi, you have my gratitude for training such a talented team. It seems I may have underestimated your ability as a teacher. All members of Team 7 broke eye contact with the Hokage and suddenly found various things around the office interesting. Kakashi I smiled and sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. You honor me, Hokage-sama. Team 7 is reporting for their first cranked mission. Irika shuffled in his corner. These kids left the academy just over a month ago and the Hokage was going to send them out of the village. Irika had voiced his concerns, but the Hokage shot him down and said this particular team was ready. All right, Kakashi. Team 7 is assigned to escort the bridge builder Tazuna back to Wave Country. Once there, Team 7 will guard him until the bridge is complete. A side mission will be to establish positive political ties with the Wave. He made a motion to his ANBU guard, and they brought Tazuna into the office. Tazuna was a fairly tall old man with a big gut. He wore a plain gray shirt with the arms cut off. He had a towel wrapped over his shoulders and around his neck and he wore a plain pair of glasses. There was nothing special about him, except for the pungent smell of cheap booze. Tazuna looked at Team 7 and wasn't impressed. How are a blind girl, a cripple and two little brats going to be able to protect me? Tazuna didn't notice the blonde move. He didn't feel the sake jar leave his hands. That is why he was so surprised when the brat took a swig of his sake and said, Wow, that is some cheap shit. Naruto handed the sake bottle back to Tazuna at normal speeds and gave him a confident smirk. Old man, if it is everyday bandits and thugs, you are worried about, don't. If there are ninja chasing you, you need to tell us now. As Naruto mentioned ninja, he sensed that Tazuna was nervous. The overall feeling he got was that Tazuna was hiding something. Naruto made meaningful eye contact with the Hokage, Hokage-sama. Please tell Kitsune I am leaving the village. He was expecting to train with me this week. Hiruzen got the message and nodded. Will do, Naruto-kun. Hiruzen flashed ANBU hand signs to Kakashi and Naruto, keep your eyes open, Naruto permission granted. 
you can show abilities if needed. Kakashi's eye widened in shock for just a second, then he addressed his team. Pack for a month-long trip. This is a mission, so all restrictive seals will be released. Meet at the front gate tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. With a chorus of, Hi, Sensei, Team 7 left the Hokage office. Hiruzen knew that Kakashi and Naruto could handle just about anything that came at them. He would keep a rapid response ANBU force ready if they called for it. Naruto took Kakashi out for dinner. He henged into his older form and they sat down at a table in the Jonin bar. They ordered their food and Naruto threw up a privacy seal. The old man is undoubtedly lying. To us. The Hokage feels the same. I think he knows about something going on in Wave that the client isn't telling us about. Yup, Ototo, I got the same feeling. We will proceed with the mission. If need be, this will be your coming out party. The Hokage clearly wants us to get into Wave's good graces, so we will just have to take it seriously. Gotcha, I will have Q in the seal. If things start getting messy, he can be our backup. With that out of the way, they enjoyed their meal and shot the shit. Kakashi had really missed spending time with Naruto. The hole in his heart always seemed to shrink when he hung out with the blonde. It was thanks to Naruto that Kakashi had started getting rid of his bad habits. He still read smut in public, but he was showing up on time and putting some actual effort into being a jonin sensei. The next morning came and Team 7 met Tazuna at the front gate. They set off as planned and Naruto produced eight clone captains that escorted the team in a diamond formation. They had been walking for half a day when something finally happened. Sasuke, Hinata, my clones picked up two enemy ninjas hidden behind a genjutsu up ahead. They are nothing special. I want you two to deal with them. Kakashi and I will back you up. Naruto whispered quietly to his team. The whole team looked to Kakashi, who gave them a nod. Hinata was nervous as she activated her Byakugan. She could clearly see two ninjas hidden in the ground below a genjutsu of a puddle. She took deep breaths and prepared herself. She had to prove to Team 7 and herself that she could to this. As she approached the puddle, she gave a hand sign to Sasuke. Each of them darted to a separate puddle. The rapid movement caught the two shinobi off guard. They barely had time to get their defenses up as they jumped out of the ground and engaged their two opponents. With Hinata's first flurry of hits, Hinata had rendered Gozu's left hand, the one connected to the chain, useless. Thus, he was forced to fight Hinata one-handed. Hinata used this opening to step into Gozu's guard and land several hits to his stomach and chest. Gozu fell to his knees and coughed up blood. Hinata hit a point on the back of his neck that paralyzed him. She took a deep breath and turned to watch the conclusion of Sasuke's fight. As soon as Hinata gave the hand sign, Sasuke activated his Sharingan and attacked the puddle on the right. When Mezu jumped from the ground and parried Sasuke's first strike, he was surprised by the boy's speed. He panicked for a split second when he landed and saw two Wantomo Sharingan looking back at him. Sasuke used that to throw two shuriken that pinned Mezu's chain to a nearby tree. As Mezu struggled to free his left gauntlet from the chain, he was hit by a great fireball jutsu. His screams, the sound of his flesh burning, and the smell made Sasuke run to the side of the road. Once there, he fell to his knees and puked up his lunch. Kakashi praised the two for their performance. He had Naruto tag Gozu and put him in a prisoner scroll. Mezu's body was put in a storage scroll to be taken back to the Hokage. Both scrolls were given to a fox summon that sprinted back to the hidden leaf. Kakashi then turned to Tsuna and put on his most intimidating face. Now, Tsuna-san, mind telling me why there were ninja waiting to ambush our group? After a lot of stuttering and begging, Kakashi got the truth out of Tazuna. Wave was in a terrible situation with a shipping magnate named Gato ruling over the small island nation. 
Gato had bought up all shipping and transport to the island and was strangling the life out of the wave economy. Tazuna started the bridge as a last hope to bring life back to wave. Gato had sent his goons after Tazuna and that is when Tazuna traveled to the Leaf for help. He apologized for lying and said that he didn't have enough to pay for anything higher than a crank mission. Team 7 had been listening to the whole story. Kakashi needed the team's buy-in before they continued. Okay, team. This is now outside the bounds of a crank mission. This is beyond what I normal genin squad can handle. I know we are not normal, but I want to know if you wish to continue or should we head back to the leaf and let another squad take over? Sasuke responded immediately, I want to continue. This is the perfect opportunity to challenge myself. No surprise there. Thought Naruto and Kakashi simultaneously. I would like to continue and help Tazuna-san as well. Hinata said meekly. You know me, sensei. I am in. Finished Naruto. He then thought, Q, be ready. I may need to summon you or borrow some chakra if this goes tits up. You got it, Kit. Replied Karama. He may have tamed down quite a bit, but the thought of blood and battle got him excited. Kakashi then turned to the old drunk, Okay, Tazuna-san. It is your lucky day. We will continue the mission. Upon completion, you will pay for an arranked mission. The Hokage will be open to a payment plan. The group continued with the mission. The next day they met up with a friend of Tazuna that ferried them across the ocean channel. The group gained their first inkling of respect for Tazuna when they saw the magnificent bridge. It was truly something to behold. It looked like the massive structure extended halfway out into the channel. When they landed in wave country, Naruto started sensing an overwhelming number of negative emotions. They walked for a bit, then Naruto sensed two high-evil chakra signatures. One of them was filled with bloodlust. The other was being heavily suppressed and had a gentle feel to it. It reminded Naruto of the feel of Hinata's chakra. He channeled Kurama's chakra into his eyes and ears to help him deal with the mist. It was this enhanced clarity that let him hear a massive blade slicing through the air. Get down. He grabbed Tazuna and Hinata then hit the dirt. Kakashi and Sasuke followed suit. The blade implanted. Itself in a tree in a tall man with bandages covering his mouth, no shirt, and pinstripe pants appeared on the blade. Well, 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 if it isn't Sharingan no Kakashi. No wonder the demon brothers failed. Hand over the bridge builder and your brats will be spared. No can do, Zabuza Momochi, demon of the hidden mist. Kakashi said as he lifted his hishiate that was covering his left eye. The newly exposed, three Tomo Sharingan spun rapidly as Kakashi prepared for a fight. Naruto created a clone captain, which then covered the bridge builder, Sasuke and Hinata in a protective barrier. Naruto stepped forward and whispered to Kakashi, You handle Zabuza, I am going to get his friend and invite them to the party. Kakashi nodded at Naruto. Zabuza saw the genin step forward, Get out of here, brat. This is a fight between real shinobi. Go back to your mommy and come find me in ten years. Naruto just chuckled. If you only knew, Zabuza. If you aren't careful, I will show you what a true demon is. Zabuza didn't like being disrespected by a brat. He grabbed his sword and jumped out onto the water. He raised one hand above his head and kept the other in a ram seal in front of his chest. Water style, hidden mist jutsu, said Zabuza. Naruto watched as a mist layered in Zabuza's own chakra spread out over the field. It was dense enough to nullify Naruto's vision, but not his other senses. He confirmed where the other ninja was and prepared to make his move. Wind style, great breakthrough, Naruto said under his breath. He channeled quite a bit of his chakra into it and aimed it at where Zabuza was. He didn't wait for the aftermath, he disappeared using Shunshin and appeared behind a ninja in a Kiri Hunter mask. He slapped a paralysis seal on the ninja and activated it. 
Meanwhile, a great wall of wind laid waste to the field in front of Zabuza. The mist cleared and revealed a water wall that protected Zabuza. All Zabuza could see was Kakashi standing in front of the barrier that contained Team 7 and Tazuna. Where did that damned brat go? To deal with your friend. Replied Kakashi in a bored tone. Are we going to do this or what? I won't bore you with the details, just imagine the cannon fight between the two. Naruto has caught the hunter Nin in his arms before she could fall. From this distance, Naruto could smell her. Naruto removed her mask, revealing a beautiful face with a delicate complexion. The paralysis seal let the ninja move her head, so she peered into Naruto's brilliant blues. Good afternoon, Ninja-san. It seems you have bested me. Now what do you want with me? she asked. Oh, not much. We can start with a talk while those two fight it out. I am Naruto. He said as he sat her propped up onto a tree. The then leaned back on his arms. What's your name and why are you here? I am a hunter Neen from Kiri. I would appreciate it if you didn't lie to me, sweetheart. It doesn't really work on me. I know you are with Zabuza, so I want to know who you are and why you follow him. The ninja paused, weighing her options. My name is Haku Momochi. I have pledged my life to serve Zabuza-sama and will give my life to help him accomplish his goals. Hmm, okay. Why? The question caught Haku off guard. She gave him the short version of her life of suffering because of her bloodline. After killing her own father, Zabuza had taken her in and trained her, so she pledged her loyalty to him. I am sorry for you suffering. Before we go join the boys, let me say this. If you love Zabuza, don't die for him, live for him. Think if you blind loyalty actually makes him happy. We need to go. Naruto sensed the fight had turned against Kakashi and he wanted to stop things from escalating. Naruto appeared with Haku slung over his shoulder in front of three Zabuza clones with Zabuza holding Kakashi in a water prison behind them. Naruto saw Zabuza preparing to cut Kakashi in half so he pressed, Whirlpool's edge, against Haku's back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, let's not be hasty Zabuza-san. I wish to make a deal with you. The boy's calm voice and demeanor concerned Zabuza. This kid shows no fear whatsoever and he bested Haku. What deal, kid? Well, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, that blade you carry was forged by the Uzumaki. If Mist stayed true to its word, which is unlikely, you pledged to never raise that blade against a member of the Uzumaki clan. I wish to know if you still uphold that vow and why you work for a piece of shit like Gato. Crap. I did swear that oath kid. But I took a job from Gato to raise money for the rebellion in Kiri. Well then, that makes this easy. I am going to kill Gato, whether you wish to stop me or not. He is the worst kind of human trash. I will kill him within the week. When I do, I will take his blood-soaked wealth and give it back to the people he stole it from. If I doubled what Gato is offering you, a promise on the pride of the Uzumaki, what would you say? Zabuza was taken aback. He had taken a job so his pride as a ninja demands he finish it. However, this kid unnerved him. He casually claims to be the son of an Uzumaki and the fourth Hokage? Tell me, kid, who was your father? Oh, you just now caught that? The fourth Hokage was my dad. I will sweeten the deal. If you release my sensei, stay out of our way for one week and deliver a couple letters to the leader of the Kiri Rebellion for me, I will quadruple what Gato is offering you. Zabuza was gobsmacked. He heard a click in the corner of his mind but thought nothing of it. Naruto slid that picture into Haku's battle kimono for a few laughs later on. Zabuza let Kakashi out of his water prison and Kakashi jumped over to Naruto, gasping for fresh air. Naruto returned the favor by removing the paralysis seal from Naruto. You got one week, kid. I will be in a dugout near Gato's hideout. 
I will hold you to your word, on the pride of the Uzumaki. Sure thing, Zabuza. See you later, Hakuchan. Thank. Goodness the mask could cover up Haku's brilliant blush, otherwise Hinata would have gotten jealous. Naruto gave them a casual wave goodbye before the two disappeared in a swirl of water. Naruto turned to a stun team seven and a bridge builder with his chin hitting the ground. Pick you jaw up of the ground, Tazuna-san, we have work to do. Team seven walked through a destitute and hopeless town. Naruto was being overwhelmed by all of the negative emotions. Shops were boarded up and partially destroyed. Kids roamed the streets in rags, begging for scraps. The look of hopelessness in every eye enraged Naruto. The reactions for Team 7 were much the same. This was the first time either of them had seen true poverty. It broke Hinata's heart every time she made eye contact with a child. She had already given out her ration bars, as had Sasuke and the others. A small dent on the mighty injustice of this land. Tazuna urged the group on and walked ten more minutes to the west. Team 7 came upon a modest house on the edge of the ocean. There was a small dock with a paddle boat tied to it. It was that very paddle boat that Tsunami had rowed to give a chance to Tazuna to get to the leaf. Team 7 entered the home following Tazuna. They came face to face with a lovely mother figure that introduced herself as Tsunami. Kit, that there is what we call MILF. Let me out so I can meet her. The sudden yelling from Kurama had startled Naruto. He put him on mute for the time being. Good evening, Tsunami-san. Thank you for inviting us into your home. I am Hitaki Kakashi and these are my genin. We will be staying here until Tazuna finishes his bridge. Thank you in advance for your hospitality. Kakashi finished with a polite bow, which was mirrored by the team. It is I who should be thanking you, Kakashi-san. Thank you for bringing my father home safely and for your continued assistance. She returned the bow. Tazuna had set off into the kitchen to grab some sake while Team 7 got set up in their room. Hinata was going to sleep in Tsunami's room. Once they were set up, Kakashi pulled Naruto onto the roof for a chat. Thank you for saving me earlier. I was in a pinch there. However, what were you thinking negotiating with a missing Nin? The chiding tone in Kakashi's voice annoyed Naruto. Well, Sensei, I made a judgment call. I could feel the purity coming off of that girl. Zabuza didn't feel evil, per se, but he felt determined and full of bloodlust. So, I figured he could be negotiated with. Plus, I didn't want to kill Haku. She is beautiful under that mask. I am thinking of making a similar offer I made to Kyumo and IWA. If the rebels are close to unseating the Mizukage, then I want to support them. Killing people for being born with bloodlines is sickening. Kakashi had gotten used to Naruto's surprises. Still, he couldn't help but shake his head in amusement. You really are a lot like you father when you talk like that. Except one woman was enough to keep him happy. Oh, can it, Nissan? If Mist accepts, I can have four of the great five bound together. That would be a good step in the right direction for my dream. Okay, to the task at hand. Naruto took back control of the conversation and redirected it to solving their current problems. Naruto and Kakashi spent the next couple of hours planning. Tsunami had wrapped their plates for them so they could eat when they were done. Kakashi loved working with the focused Naruto. The plan broke down into four parts. 1. Recon. They need to locate Gato's base of operations and any potential hideouts of his thugs. They need to know if there are any more missing Nin and the number of thugs he has. 2. Infiltrate. Take out a couple of thugs, have Naruto's clones transform into them and get a good look at the inside of the base. 3. Fight. Take the initiative and surprise Gato. After locating the ninja, they will need to be the first to go. 4. Repair. Seize Gato's assets and help Wave recover. 
With an idea of how they wanted to proceed, Naruto created ten Shadow Clone Captains. They were each assigned a part of the island to scout. Two more Shadow Clone Captains were created to watch the town. If any thugs tried to rough the townspeople up, they were to deal with them discreetly. Enough is enough. The next day, Q showed up claiming to be backup from Kanoha. He made quite the impression on Tsunami with the same style of introduction he gave to Tsunade. The Shadow Clones had returned with their information Naruto created pretty detailed map for Team 7. Kakashi was going to go with Naruto to get eyes on Gato's hideout, which is an old ocean liner that is beached on the east side of the island. There were also four smaller hideouts that Gato's thugs man scattered around the town. One clone found Zabuza's dugout and scared the crap out of Haku. The clone blushed at her partially naked figure before Zabuza ran to the entrance of the hideout only to find the blonde kid. After a tense exchange, the clone let him know that he was just scouting the island. The clone told Zabuza that he will be informed when the attack is happening. Kakashi was concerned about the three rogue IWA ninja in Gato's employ. They had freshly marked Hishiate. The scout clone said there was one Jonin level and two Chunin level. If Team 7 had to fight them and Zabuza, things would get messy. As long as Team 7 retained the initiative, they will be able to take them out relatively easy. The primary concern for the Kanoha team and for Tazuna was the safety of the townspeople. This put Kakashi in a tough spot. He knew Naruto could make a crap ton of shadow clones to protect the town, but doing so would make him less than 100% for the fight. Q offered to protect the town but Kakashi was worried about leaving a biju unattended around a village with no defenses. It took Naruto's convincing before Kakashi gave the okay for that part of the plan. The main objective for day two was to take out some thugs and have Naruto transform into them. Naruto's transformation was much more effective than a henge, so if they ran into ninja, they shouldn't catch on to him. The objective for this was to map out the ocean liner and locate the ninja, any hostages, Gato's office and his safe. Naruto wore a cloak with his stealth seal as he entered town. He got up on the roofs and spread clones out throughout the dilapidated town. Around noon, Naruto watched three thugs with shoddy weapons walk into a local baker. The thugs harassed the owner and threatened to kill his daughter if he didn't feed them. Naruto had one of his clones, Henge, into Tsunami and enter the bakery. The clone then immediately left as if it were scared. The ploy worked and the thugs followed the fake Tsunami into a nearby alley. Before any of them registered something was wrong, Naruto retrofit their heads with a kunai. He sealed the bodies away after taking their belongings and clothing. Three clones, henged into the thugs, put on their clothing and weapons and walked back to the ocean liner. When the clones got to the ocean liner, they walked under the big banner reading Gato Industries and did their best to fit in with the crowd. The clones reported into a bandit named Sajim when they returned to the ship and were told to go to the crew's quarters. This area was not nearly as nice as Gato's. There was broken glass and spilled drinks littered throughout the hallway. The lounge was furnished with dilapidated furniture that smelled like the scum it seated. The lighting was poor but there were easily twenty mercenaries just sitting around playing cards and drinking. Yo, Hachi, how did the trip into town go? Did you bring any back for us? The Naruto clones didn't know which bandit was Hachi, so they guessed. The clone in the middle said, the damn baker didn't have enough to fill out bellies. How could we bring you lot anything? I wasn't talking to you Danu, so shut your fucking trap. The clone of Danu scowled at the talkative mercenary. The man stepped up, put his shoulders back and chest out. You got something to say, punk. The clone unsheathed the poor quality katana and unseated the unknown bandit's head with a surprising speed. The whole room gawked at the Danu clone. Watchia goons looking at? He picked a fight and I finished it. End of story. This earned the clone Danu a trip to Gato's office, escorted by one of the three ninjas. 
what's an IWA ninja doing here in Wave? Dino asked with curiosity in his tone. Shut your trap, bandit scum. Don't put yourself on equal footing with me. Replied the ex-stone ninja. Ah, come on. I heard some pretty sweet things about ninja, seen some scary shit too. You got a name or am I gonna have to call you Stony? Tsuchimaru. I left IWA because the Kage there betrayed us. He dares ally with Kanoha scum. Even offered them his fucking granddaughter. So, me and my boys left. End of story. Nice tough meet cha. Maru. Name's Danu. You gonna kill me for killing that guy? That's up to Gato. Now shut up, I am done talking to you. Hi, hi. Replied the clone Danu waving him off. Gato's quarters were in the captain's quarters and had been renovated with extravagant tapestries and carpets. It did spruce up the old, abandoned ship a bit. Danu was taken to Gatto's office and questioned about killing one of Gatto's men. Gatto ended up liking his brutality and told Danu to get a raiding party together. He heard Tazuna was back in town, so he wanted the bridge builder brought back. The clone Danu accepted the mission and gathered ten guys to go hit up Tazuna's house. While Naruto was doing this, Kakashi took Sasuke and Hinata out to train on the ocean. Water walking on wavy water was significantly harder than on a calm lake. Therefore, by the two sparring in a wavy ocean, their chakra control should improve greatly. Normally, Sasuke would beat Hinata, but the water was the great equalizer. Hinata had much better chakra control than Sasuke and water was her element. The spars tended to go in Hinata's favor the longer they fought for. Team 7 regrouped with Tsunami for dinner. Q sat next to the lovely woman and was laying it on thick. The dinner as going fairly until Inari, Tsunami's son, broke down and lost his shit. He kept screaming about her they were going to die and Gato's too strong. The boy ran out of the house followed by Naruto. Naruto took Inari to the docks and was talking to him. Inari, I was sorry to hear about your stepfather. It sounds like he was a great man. Naruto let the boy get his sniffles out. It is my goal to become a man like Kaisa. He was called to fight for something greater than themselves. He went to the pure world knowing that he did all he can to fight against the evil of this world. What's your point? Gato killed him and he left mom and me all alone. Pouted the boy. My point is that Kaisa was and is a hero. He understood that all evil needs to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Kaisa stood up to evil and fought for his people. I ask that you do not dishonor his sack. Naruto cut off his statement as he sensed somebody trip his security tags. Inari, I need you to go back to the house. Tell my team to lock it down. There are men in the woods east of here coming this way. Go. Now. The boy scurried off to the house and Naruto leaped off to prepare a proper welcome. He could feel that his clone that was leading the group. He took out Whirlpool's edge and decided that he would kill all but one of them. The clone Danu was leading the bandits through the woods toward Tazuna's house. They were loud, obnoxious and disgusting creatures. Talking about rape like it was the best thing in the world. Bullying and killing defenseless people. There was no need to feel sorry for trash like this. Danu saw a blur, heard the swish of a blade cutting through the wind and saw the head fall. It wasn't until the fourth head hit the ground that the ragtag group reacted. There were five bandits and one Naruto clone left. Naruto himself stood in front of the remaining mercenaries, holding his black and red wakizashi with one hand. With an exaggerated flick of the blade to clear the blood, Naruto raised his head to address the bandits. Who feels like talking in exchange for their life? Three bandits raised their hands and two growled at him and held their weapons at the ready. The clone that was imitating Danu killed those two from behind and then transformed back into Naruto. I tell ya, boss, it sucked being that guy. Keep the one in the middle, 
he will talk. Then the clone dispelled with a final two-fingered salute to Naruto. Kakashi showed up as Naruto was cleaning his blade on the jacket of the merc chosen to remain alive. He could see the fear in the man's eyes and smell the urine running down his leg. Was this really necessary, Naruto? How about you take my clone's memories and then try to ask me that question again? He pointed to the bandit. I told him I wouldn't kill him in exchange for information. I made no promises on your behalf. Have fun. Naruto disappeared in a wind shunshin to go cool his head in the woods. Q found him lying down on a thick branch a couple hours later. You know, Q, I promised you to make the world a better place. I promised I would never give up. And I won't, but this darkness eats at you. It clings to you and makes you feel dirty. I think I understand how you got lost in your hatred for humanity now. The low, contemplative tone Naruto was using worried Q. You know, Kit. I still feel that way. I can't wash away centuries of what you are feeling overnight. But you know what, Kit? When I am around you, that hatred flees. Q paused and hesitated a bit before continuing. The sage created us to be partners to humanity. He envisioned a world where we would work alongside them. Where people would understand each other. That is why he decided to share his chakra with humanity. He hoped that, through the art of Nin Shu, humans would come to understand each other, and us. Then the darkness of this world took Nin Shu and corrupted it into its bastardized form, Ninjutsu. Then the humans sought to enslave us Biju with the very gift our father gave them. That is why I was blinded by hatred for centuries. Until I met you, Kit. Q walked up the tree trunk and bent down to ruffle Naruto's hair. Q's words hit Naruto hard. Would the sage be okay with me using this corrupted power to cleanse the world of this filth? Would he condone the slaughter of those pigs that call themselves human? Will Kami bless me or let Yami deal with me when I die? I have already killed hundreds, Q. Tears began to fall from Naruto's face. Kyubi picked Naruto up and pulled him into a hug. And I have killed thousands, Kit. Do you believe me to be an evil monster? Would you condemn my soul to suffering? The way I see it, you have taken on the mission. The sage left to me. Except you have not let yourself fall into the darkness. Your strength of will shields you from it, Kit. Fear not, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, if you fall into the darkness, I will drag you back out of it. Naruto wailed into Q's shoulder and found solace in his hug. After a few minutes, Naruto stepped back from the embrace. Thanks, Q. I really needed that. They walked back to the house together and Naruto went straight to bed. The next morning, Naruto told them about what his clone saw. He drew out a map with key locations highlighted for the group. The IWA ninja were in the quarters located just below Gatos. He told them about Tsuchimaru, the Jonin, and the other mercenaries there. Kakashi had scoped out the vessel last night and noted the guard patterns. Kakashi laid out the plan. The best time to strike will be 3 a.m. The guards are undisciplined. If we are lucky, we will be able to kill the IWA ninja in their sleep. We should do everything we can to not raise the alarm before dealing with those three. Naruto and I will deal with the ninja. Sasuke will target the mercenaries' quarters, do not hold back Sasuke. These men are scum. Naruto's clone confirmed that much. Hinata will extract the women held below deck. We will deal with the outposts after the ship is secured. Q will protect the village in our absence and Naruto will protect the house with clones. Once Kakashi had finished, Kakashi-sensei, these ninjas essentially defected because of me. Instead of killing them, could we slap paralysis seals on them? Send them in a prisoner scroll back to IWA, as a show of good faith? Also, Gato is no threat. I say we capture him alive and let the people of Wave decide his fate. If we can subdue the ninja in their sleep, 
I am okay with that plan. However, I will not endanger anybody here for that purpose. If they fight us, we fight to kill. Was Kakashi's curt reply. A chorus of, hi, sensei, was the response. Sasuke was disappointed that he couldn't fight the ninja, but he would at least get some combat experience from this. Naruto pulled Sasuke aside later in the day. Hey, bro. I wanted to talk to you about your part of the mission. I know you got your first kill a couple days ago. I know it affected you, it affected me too. When you are in there, you cannot freeze up. You cannot let them get the drop on you. These men abandoned their humanity a long time ago. The state this country is in is proof of that. Promise me you won't freeze, brother. HNN. I will be fine, Ruto. Thanks for the heads up. We will see each other after the mission. The Uchiha held out his arm to Naruto and the two clasped forearms. It was amazing to see how much Sasuke had changed after receiving training and instruction from Naruto. Naruto could still sense the darkness of Sasuke's desire for revenge, but his determination and desire to protect dwarfed it now. Naruto spent the day securing Tazuna's house with privacy seals and Q went to go watch over the village. Team 7 did mission prep and final checks right after dinner. Naruto gave stealth tags, flash tags and a stack of explosive tags to each member of the group. Tazuna, Tsunami and Inari watched them leave the house shortly after nightfall. Around midnight, the group took up positions around the vessel. Naruto dispatched a shadow clone to let Zabuza know that tonight was the night. Haku gave the Naruto clone a hug and wished him good luck before it dispelled, much to Zabuza's chagrin. Team 7 watched the activity on the boat die down as the night drew on. Just before the guards shift change at 3 a.m., Team 7 equipped their cloaking tags and walked up the side of the vessel. Each member of Team 7 was responsible for neutralizing a guard and then the guard's replacement. This was the most difficult for Hinata, who killed the man with an overloaded Juken strike to his heart. Naruto was looking at her and made eye contact with her when the deed was done. That look in his eyes helped her harden her resolve. After taking out the replacement guards ten minutes later with very little sound and no resistance, the group split off to complete their assigned tasks. Naruto and Kakashi Wall walked to the floor below the captain's quarters. Naruto could hear muffled thumping coming from the floor above, but he toned it out. He and Kakashi staged outside the door of the IWA Miss Singman's room. Naruto slapped a sound dampening seal on the door in an effort to eliminate the creaking when opening the door. The two entered the room with paralysis seals in hand. They slinked through the room without a sound and attached them to the foreheads of two of the missing Nin. They activated the seals and then the action began in earnest. The Jonin missing Nin was a light sleeper and the thumping coming from upstairs wasn't helping. When he felt the chakra flare produced by the seal tags being activated, he immediately jumped out of bed. He saw two shimmers near the beds of his companions. He grabbed the alarm clock sitting on his bedside table charged it with Bokutan, explosion, chakra and threw it like a makeshift grenade at one of the shimmers. Kakashi had heard his movement and was able to dodge the projectile, but the shockwave produced by the explosion of the makeshift grenade threw him hurtling toward the missing Nin. Naruto acted immediately and darted at the IWA ninja before he could land a hit on Kakashi. The wind chakra enhanced punch shattered the ninja's collarbone and propelled him into the wall. Kakashi, we have gone loud. I will handle him, go secure Gato. Be careful, Ruto. Don't let him touch you with that Bokutan chakra. Choosing to trust his little brother figure, Kakashi darted out the room and up to Gato's chambers. Maru got to his feet and took a shaky breath, that hurt, brat. Hey, you're that kid that Anoki betrayed us for. Oh, this is perfect. I am going to blow you to kingdom come boy. Naruto created two clones to secure the prisoners. The clones grabbed the ninja and took them to the rendezvous point before Maru could stop them. 
leaving Naruto in an enclosed space with an explosion user. He didn't like the battle environment, not one bit. Naruto charged a Rasengan in his right hand and jumped toward Maru. Maru dodged, as expected. Naruto used the Rasengan to blow a hole in the side of the ship and jumped out onto the deck of the ship. In the chaos of the explosion, Naruto deactivated the Rasengan and created two clones. As expected, Maru chased him outside. You can't get away from me that easy, bastard. You will pay for what your father did to my family. Maru shouted and then darted at Naruto. With a fist full of Bokuden chakra he lashed out at Naruto. A clone Naruto substituted with the original to take the hit. In the ensuing smoke screen, Naruto performed three hand signs ending on Tiger. He brought his hand to his mouth and thought, Katan, flamethrower jutsu. The condensed stream of flame tore into the smoke and struck Maru in the back. He flew forward from the pressure of the jutsu and slammed into a shipping container. He struggled to his feet, only to feel a pressure on his neck. Then the world rotated wildly until he heard a thud and was looking at the floor of the ship. Then his brain shut down and his soul left his body. Naruto sheathed his wakizashi, put Maru's remains into a storage scroll and raced back into the ship to complete the mission. Twenty minutes later Team 7 met at the rendezvous point. Sasuke was covered in blood and had a gash on his right arm but was more or less okay. Hinata was paler than normal and had a few specks of blood on her face and jacket. She was leading a group of fifteen women that looked destitute and broken. Naruto walked over to her, put one hand on her shoulder and the other hand gently lifted her chin until their eyes met. Hinata's eyes were glistening in the moonlight with tears. She buried her face in Naruto's chest then cried out her emotions. Kakashi looked the best out of Team 7. He would fully admit that he had the easiest part of the mission. Gato only had four thugs positioned as a security detail. It barely took Kakashi 20 seconds to deal with them. Another 20 seconds and a couple explosive tags made Gato's metal door fly off its hinges into the far wall. A chop to Gato's neck and a prisoner scroll later made Kakashi's the fastest and cleanest job of the night. Kakashi smiled at the girl that was being sexually assaulted by Gato and told her that he would take her back to town, she nodded eagerly and follow him off the ship. Kakashi ordered Sasuke and Hinata to escort the captives back into town before he and Naruto went and looted the ship. Well, it was mostly Naruto's clones putting everything into scrolls and cataloging their loot. Kakashi was able to crack Gato's safe and secure details on his operations, contact lists, and a shitload of gold and Ryo. Naruto put Zabuza's pay and a couple. Water ninjutsu scrolls in a separate scroll. Tidying up the ship took three hours, even with a hundred clones. As Kakashi and Naruto left the ship a beautiful sunrise peeked over the ocean. They had one more stop before returning to Tazuna's for some well-earned RNR, Kakashi and Naruto approached Zabuza's dugout slowly. They flared their chakra to let him know they were coming. Zabuza and Haku emerged from the bunker and gave a short greeting to the pair. Naruto stepped forward. As promised, here is 1.2 million Ryo. I added a 200,000 Ryo bonus in there from my personal bank as an unofficial contribution to the war effort. I ask that you deliver these two letters to the leader of the rebellion. Haku, I wish to give this last letter to you. It should explain a bit. I would ask you not to read it until you have won your rebellion though. Naruto finished his statement with a slight blush. Zabuza looked at the kid in front of him with a hint of amusement and a lot of suspicion. Why, Gaki? You don't even know us. Why would you go so far for a pair of missing nin? Naruto smirked at Zabuza. Mainly because of Haku here. I have only felt chakra with such purity from one other person. After hearing a brief version of your story, I wanted to help. I believe the rebellion is in the right and anything is better than a maniac that seeks out war. Damn, Gaki, you are a strange one. 
well, I will deliver these for you and Kiri will owe you one when we win. I wish I could say it was a pleasure, Hataki. We will have to finish that match of ours another time. You too, Gaki, next time I see you, you owe me a spar. Naruto smirked and nodded. He wasn't ready for Haku to walk up to him and plant a quick kiss on his cheek. I look forward to seeing you again, Naruto-kun. She grabbed Zabuza's arm and forced him to walk away back to Kiri. You will pay for that one next time I see you, brat. Screamed Zabuza while he was being dragged away by Haku. He quieted down after Haku whispered something in his ear. Naruto's keen hearing picked up the word, picture. When it clicked, he burst out laughing. Team 7 took the next day off and joined the town celebration. They got their loved ones back and Tazuna was dividing the spoils from Gato's hideout. Later in the day, Gato was strung up on a cross and had both of his arms broken. He was gagged and left to die on the cross. It was the same way he killed Kaisa. Q saw it as a fitting punishment. The celebration dragged on late into the night. Q and Tsunami didn't come home until the next morning. Naruto was sitting in the kitchen when they walked in. Tsunami's hair was a mess, there were bits of twigs and leaves scattered throughout her unkept brown locks. She was holding her sandals and her kimono hung loosely off her form. She walked past Naruto with a slight limp and gave him a meaningful look. The kind of look that says, say anything and I will beat you senseless. Q and Naruto smirked at each other and gave a mental high five. Naruto learned a lot from those memories when Q dispelled. Team 7 stayed in wave for another two weeks. The villagers kept bringing them gifts as they helped finish the bridge. Every able-bodied villager could be found helping Tazuna on the bridge, along with 200 Naruto clones. The villagers ended each day visibly closer to achieving their goal, while Tsunami and Q ended each day in each other's company. The bridge was finished at the end of the two-week period and Team 7 left with much fanfare. Tsunami became the newly elected daimyo of Wave Country and sent a letter of gratitude and friendship with Team 7. The memories Naruto got when Q dispelled left him blushing for the whole trip back to Konoha. Team 7 reported into the Hokage and gave him the rest of the mission payment from Wave Country. Really it was money confiscated from Gato, but hey, who's counting? The non-monetary items confiscated from Gato were given to the Hokage as well. The intelligence department would be grateful for the information on Gato's associates and business partners. Team 7 was given one week off and pay for an arranked mission. A couple days prior, a fox showed up in Iwagakor with a scroll for the Tsuchikage and a letter for Kuratsuchi. When Anoki found the two prisoner scrolls, he handed off the missing Nin. When he opened the storage scroll with Mura's body, he shook his head. That kid was unbelievable. A short note to Anoki was also attached. To my soon-to-be G.I. San Hihi, I hope you are okay with me calling you that. I ran into these guys in wave. Tried to take them all alive but Maru was a tough opponent. Please know I do not blame you or IWA for their actions. Maru made it pretty clear he defected because you chose to trust me. I look forward to seeing you at the Chunin exams. With respect Naruto Uzumaki Namike's PS hold on to the kunai for me, I will come pick up your teams a week before the Chunin exams start. Anoki's heart skipped a beat when he saw the familiar three-pronged kunai with a seal on its hilt. This kid will be the death of him. How many surprises can he expect one old heart to take? Before the Chunin exams three months passed in a flash for Team 7. After their week break, Team 7 completed ten crank missions that passed without incident. One noteworthy mission was Naruto's second trip to the Fire Capital, a delivery mission to the Fire Daimyo. It contained a letter from the Hokage and an invite to the upcoming Chunin exams. The Fire Daimyo just took it as an excuse to talk to Naruto. His interest in the boy was piqued. In Hiruzen's private correspondence, he asked for Naruto to be his heir apparent. This left the Fire Daimyo with a long to think about. 
The boy was beyond exceptional, but was he ready for the burden of being a Hokage? During their week off, Naruto was finally able to use the Hiration without killing himself. It was nowhere close to battle ready, but he could use it for travel purposes. To reach his markers in IWA and Kyumo he would have to use some of Q's chakra, but it was doable. He notified Jiraiya and the Hokage after his first successful attempt and the Hokage gave him permission to put a marker outside his office. It would take the secretary years to get used to the spontaneous yellow flashes. Danzo had been in a mood lately. The fact that he realized he was in a mood made his frown deepen. He had just gotten out of the hospital and all of his bandages were removed, his leg was fixed, and he wasn't limping anymore. As he looked out over Kanoha with two eyes from the first time in fifteen years, he sighed. Naruto had gone to bat for him and begged Tsunade and the Hokage to help Danzo heal from his injuries. Danzo's right arm had atrophied severely, and he had no motor function left in it. Tsunade surgically removed the arm and replaced it with a prosthetic Naruto had learned about from the Yuzu scrolls. Danzo scowled as he remembered the five weeks he spent recovering in the hospital. The brat had the audacity to get him help and then not visit him once the whole time he was stuck in that Kamadamned hospital. Danzo now knew why he was in a mood. Where the hell is that brat? How could he not visit his Danzo Jison? Not even once? Danzo's scowl turned so deep at this thought that it passed his chin. He set out to the Hokage Tower to get answers. As Danzo was exiting the hospital, Anko received an invite to dinner at the Dango shop from a Naruto clone. She didn't know exactly what she felt for the blonde Gaki. She just knew that whenever he was around, the ache in her seal disappeared. She was so excited that she popped the Naruto clone by hugging it with excessive force. Naruto, in his aged henge, met Anko at the Dango shop that evening. He bought her as much Dango as she could eat. Once she was fully satisfied, he took her hand in his. I think I did it, Anko-chan. Did what, Rudokun? she said in a playful voice. I completed the formula to remove your seal. I will need Tsunade back on and Jiraiya Kyofu there, but everything should work out. He whispered to her in an excited voice. The gigawatt smile he was flashing combined with the statement got an explosive reaction from Anko. The whole restaurant turned and looked at the couple after Anko squealed like a schoolgirl, hopped over the table into Naruto's lap and threw herself into a passionate kiss with Naruto. The blush that adorned the old restaurant owner's face was mirrored by the other occupants. The owner was just happy for his best customer. She was given a hard lot in life, and he felt like she deserved this happiness. The two ignored the catcalls and teasing taunts like, get a room as they continued the session. Eventually everyone turned back to what they were doing and left the two to make out in peace. Two days later Anko went to the Namike's estate. Tsubaki led her down to the study where she saw Jiraiya, Tsunade, the Hokage and Naruto waiting for her. The training Ground was cleared and covered in a massive, circular ceiling array with an empty space in the center. Okay, Anko. Everyone is here and everything is set. I had Jiraiya review my notes and it should work. I want you to know ahead of time that there are a few possible complications. Ruto, I don't care. I trust you. Get this fucking thing off of me. She said this with a seriousness in her tone that was rare for her. The group chuckled good-naturedly. They all wished Anko their best and stepped back. I apologize in advance, Anko-chan. This is going to hurt, and you will need to remove your top. I will have to draw seals onto your chest and back. Naruto said sheepishly. An unabashed Anko threw off her jacket and pulled her mesh shirt over her head. Jiraiya got put into a wall by Tsunade and Hiruzen had to wipe the trickle of blood from his nose. A heavily blushing Naruto and one clone drew the seals onto Anko. Jiraiya inspected his work and gave a thumbs up. Unfortunately, said thumbs up was accompanied by a lecherous grin and a nosebleed, which earned him another flight into the wall. 
Tsunade was mad but she knew that this was part of her, Baka, that she had accepted long ago. It wouldn't stop her from trying to beat the habit out of him though. After dealing with the pervert, Anko lay down on the center of the ceiling array with Naruto on her left and Tsunade on her right. Tsunade was there to monitor her condition and providing stabilizing, healing chakra to Anko. Before Naruto started, Anko pulled his head down into a brief, but passionate, kiss. There is more where that came from when you get this damn thing off of me. She said that after Tsunade had pushed her back down to forcibly break the kiss with her blonde brat. The look on Tsunade's face could freeze the flames of Amaterasu. She didn't exactly approve of Naruto being sexually active yet. Okay Enko-chan, here goes nothing. He said with a smile. Let's do this, Kurama. He thought to his valued partner. Naruto took a deep breath, activated his Kyubi cloak and channeled chakra into the seals drawn onto Anko. The whole seal array glowed blue with a reddish tinge, the glow started from Anko's seal and then spread from her body to the edges of the array. The seal array then started collapsing in on itself from the far edges. When the array had collapsed completely around Anko, the kanji on her body turned from a blue into a dark red and started collapsing around the cursed seal. As soon as the chakra hit Anko's body, she started twitching in pain. When the entire ceiling array collapsed and surrounded the curse mark Anko let out a gut-wrenching scream and started convulsing. Tsunade applied as much healing chakra as she could, but it was nothing compared to the pain Anko was feeling. Finally, her skin around the seal bulged and a vile, black substance oozed out of the seal. Once it was completely out, a barrier of kanji encircled it. It took the form of a snake before the kanji collapsed in on itself and destroyed the unknown substance. Naruto fell back on his haunches and let out a deep breath. Beads of sweat peppered his brow and he looked exhausted. Tsunade immediately did a diagnostic jutsu and applied healing chakra over the place where the cursed seal used to be. Enko lay unconscious on the floor, with her ladies resting proudly on a slowly rising and falling chest. If the situation weren't so serious, Hiruzen and Jiraiya would have joined Enko in realm of the unconscious from nose bleeds. However, both men managed to hold it together. Naruto threw a loose shirt onto Anko and carried her to his room. He placed her on the bed and was startled when she pulled him down onto the bed. A sleeping Anko latched onto and around Naruto. Escape was impossible, and quite frankly, he didn't want to. He was exhausted and the pillowy mounds beckoned him to sleep. The next day Anko awoke from her sleep feeling like a new woman. She didn't recognize the room she was in, nor the body pillow she was snuggling. When she looked down and saw the spiky blonde locks of hair, she immediately checked to make sure her clothes were on. To her relief, they were. She looked out the window and saw that the sun was just beginning to rise. She untangled herself from the boy and woke him up gently. With a nudge to the shoulder and a, good morning, Rudokun, Naruto woke up. The beautiful face and untamed purple hair of Anko greeted him when he opened his eyes. Good morning, Anko-chan. How do you feel? Like a new woman, Rudokun. I don't know how I could ever repay you. She said in a shy tone as she looked away from the brilliant blue eyes that tunneled into her soul. Naruto placed a hand under her chin and slowly lifted her head to regain eye contact. You don't owe me anything. Anko-chan. You are a cherished friend of mine and I only want you to be happy. The sincerity of his tone and the look in his eyes melted what little resistance Anko could mount. She brought her face to his and gave him a slow, deep and sweet kiss. Do me a favor, Rudokun. Transform into your adult form so I don't feel as guilty for what I am about to do. She whispered seductively to a wide-eyed Naruto. Triple X Lemon Warning Triple X Naruto complied with Anko's request and transformed. He knew what was about to happen from Q's memories and only hoped he could live up to her expectations. He was a mixture of excited and nervous. Go get her, Kit. I will tune out and give you some privacy. 
I am proud of you. Naruto chuckled internally. Thanks Q. When Naruto had finished his transformation, Anko rolled on top of him and entered a passionate lip lock. Tongues danced and saliva was exchanged freely. Each moment drew them deeper into each other. After they broke the kiss, Naruto whispered to Anko. Are you sure, Hibiheim? The nod he got in response removed all limiters. He reversed their positions and resumed the makeout session. His hand worked down her curvy figure until they found the edges of her shirt. With a lift and some shuffling from Anko, her beautiful and bountiful mounds were exposed. With a growl, Naruto ripped off his own shirt, exposing an athletic figure with toned muscles and nearly zero fat. Anko's hands ran up his abs, over his pecs and behind his shoulders. Her nails dug into the skin above his scapula, and she pulled him down to her face fiercely. Naruto's hands cupped her breasts and played with her nipples. His tender ministrations earned him a moan from his gorgeous companion. Naruto broke the kiss with a squeeze and a playful twist to her nipple. Naruto kissed his way down the left side of her neck and took her left nipple into his mouth. He nibbled, licked and sucked on the soft, light pink protrusion. Hand and mouth swapped sides as he provided equal attention to her other nipple. Anko's hands raced through Naruto's rich, blonde locks. Squeezes of the hair and nails on his scalp kept Naruto informed of her pleasure and directed him where to go. When his calloused hand departed from her breast and traveled south, she braced herself. They were rapidly crossing the point of no return. She gasped seductively when his hands entered her pants, and his middle finger penetrated her folds. She ripped him away from her boob and brought him into a soul-searing kiss. The mounting pleasure exploded a few minutes later and Anko's eyes rolled back. She let out a scream of pleasure and her nails drew blood from Naruto's back. She forced Naruto on his back and inverted herself on top of him. The tent she saw pitched in his pants made her smirk. With great anticipation, she instructed Naruto to remove his pants and he made her to the same. After some awkward shuffling, both garments were removed, and they laid themselves bare to each other. The head of the eight-inch pole stared straight at Anko. The pre-cum leaking from its slit let Anko know exactly how badly Naruto wanted this. She started with a tender lick and kiss. The moan she got from Naruto urged her on. Before she took him in her mouth, Anko gasped as two fingers entered her womanhood and again when the soft tongue started lapping up her juices. With renewed vigor she took his length into her mouth. The ten-minute battle of wills led to both lovers tasting the other's juices in a blissful climax. Naruto flipped Anko around and guided her head to cuddle on his chest. The snake mistress wasn't done yet though. While cuddling with her Rudokuen, Anko's hand snaked down and started rousing him back to full mast. She climbed on top of the feral looking blonde and positioned her snatch on top of Naruto's cock. I want you to know I was saving myself for whoever removed that forsaken seal. I am glad it was you. I give myself freely to you. She said with a shy smile. I am grateful for your offer and accept it with my whole heart. I do not deceive you when I say I love you, my Hebeheim. Anko leaned down into a kiss and lowered herself onto Naruto's cock. The gasp that escaped her lips was answered by a deep growl of pleasure. Naruto waited for Anko to take the lead and wasn't disappointed when she began moving her hips up and down in a tantalizingly slow and rhythmic fashion. The snug warmth that milked Naruto made him throw his head back into his pillow. His hands migrated to her hips, and he began thrusting to match her pace. Anko's third orgasm soon followed, and Naruto spilled a fresh batch of seed into her womb. Intermittent periods of rutting and cuddling continued through the morning. The sweet smell of sex filled the room and both parties basked in it. They finished the morning session in the shower to clean off the blood and bodily juices. After the shower, Naruto reverted to his base form and got dressed. Anko was surprised to see that his length remained the same. She figured that had aged with his transformation, 
but she was pleasantly surprised to be proven wrong. Triple X Lemon and Triple X the two walked downstairs and into the kitchen. They encountered a scowling Tsunade, an embarrassed Tsubaki and Jiraiya was grinning like an idiot with his thumb held proudly in the air. Naruto casually greeted the group and went off to cook something up for Anko. Anko, never one to back down, met Tsunade's scowl with a bold smile. Is there something wrong, Tsunade-sama? The innocent voice she used fooled nobody. You are eighteen and he is thirteen. You think he was ready for something as serious as sex? Replied Tsunade in a frozen tone. You don't know how much he cares about you. You flaunt your sexuality and think sex is something casual to throw around. What you just did will end up hurting him for far longer than this happiness will last. Anko was pissed. Anko was furious. Anko knew she shouldn't, but she couldn't stop the fist that planted itself in Tsunade's gut. Tsubaki squeaked and Jiraiya made a move to intervene. As Tsunade was bent over Anko's fist, Anko answered the charges against her. I will have you know it was my first time too, you bitch. I spent three years with him in ANBU. He is the one person who loves me for me, so you can go fuck yourself. My sexuality is my mask, you stupid cunt. I didn't do that casually. I did it with every bit as much love as Ruto gave me. You know, I thought you were different. Thanks for another disappointment in my life. She hissed and then ran out of the Namike's compound. Tsunade was so stunned she stayed hunched over. Naruto had heard the altercation, but it was over before he could intervene. He chased after Anko immediately. Tsuheim, you know I love you. What you just did was wrong. Sure, the Gaki is young, but did you ever stop to think of his mental maturity or about the bond those two have shared for years? Anko scares the fuck out of me, but she is different when she is with Naruto. He pulled her up and into a tender hug. I know how much you love the Gaki, so I beg you to listen to my advice. Make up and apologize. To them both before this situation snowballs out of control. Jiraiya gave her a kiss on the cheek and left the room for her to reflect. Naruto caught Anko as she was leaving the compound and wrapped her up from behind. She struggled to get out of his grip and start rampaging through Konoha. Naruto used Shunshin to take her to the top of the Hokage Monument. After commanding her to sit in an authoritative but caring tone, he sat down next to her and took her hand. My Hibiheim, I apologize for Bakon. She was out of line, and I will have it out with her later. The Anko I know, and love, is strong, beautiful and obstinate. She wouldn't listen to the words of the ignorant. She plows through all obstacles head-on while flipping the bird to all who doubt her. She takes joy in proving all haters wrong and finds solace in those who are privileged enough to know the real Anko Mitarashi. He pulled her close to him and wrapped an arm around her. By the end of his overture, she had leaned her head against his shoulder. It hurts so much more coming from someone important to you, Ruto. You know the mask I wear in public and why I do it. I know that part of this is my fault, but her words cut so deep. I don't know how else to say it, I love you too much to lose you, Ruto. It terrifies me when I think about it. I know that people will make comments about the age gap and my fear is that they will eventually get you to leave me. The tears that adorned Anko's cheeks found their way to Naruto's shoulder. His toned arms offered her refuge and she gladly accepted. Before Naruto continued, Naruto separated from her just enough to raise her chin and look in her eyes. Anko, I told you I love you. You know me, I never go back on my word. I know that things will get complicated very shortly. You have told me about your thoughts on the CRA and sharing. I am forever grateful that you still decided to give us a chance. You will forever be my first and I will forever hold you in my heart. I am not going anywhere, no matter what Bakon says. His face adorned a genuine smile, and he placed a chaste kiss on her lips. Anko accepted the kiss. Thanks, Ruto. 
I just need some time to clear my head. We will talk soon. With a parting kiss, Naruto used Shunshin return to the Namikaze compound. The shouting match between Naruto and Tsunade started as a reasonable back and forth. When Tsunade tried to say that Naruto didn't know what he feels, Naruto was the one that started the shouting. Naruto ripped into Tsunade fiercely and hit her with some admittedly low blows. It left Naruto in a foul mood, which he took out on the training grounds. Tsunade wound up passed out on a bar stool. Jiraiya got a tip from Izumo and picked her up later that night and to take her home. Triple X Romantically Diplomatic Triple X A week before the Chunin exams, Naruto used the Hiration to flash to the kunai he left in the Reikage's office. Samui had told AI when and how Naruto would be picking them. Up. Kyumo was going to send two teams to the exams, but Naruto couldn't transport that many. The chakra required to use the Hiration increases multiplicatively with the distance. The chakra requirement is increased exponentially when transporting another person. The result, Naruto could transport four people from Kumo to Kanoha. Any more passengers would leave him in a state of chakra exhaustion. In the Reikage's office, Yujito and her team could be seen loitering around. They didn't know an exact time, because Naruto said he would be there in the morning. When Naruto flashed in front of the Reikage's desk, AI chuckled. Damn, kid. A big part of me hoped you were bluffing. I am glad I took you up on your offer. How was the trip? Good morning, Reikage sama the trip was short and sweet. AI could appreciate the cocky smirk that Naruto wore. He would often use the same look when he just won a fight. Thank you for offering to help with Team Yujito's trip to Konoha, it was mighty chivalrous of you. Now, it was AI's turn to smirk as the blonde, and the blonde behind him, blushed. Let me introduce you. Team 34, Post. AI bellowed. The genin scurried out of their seats and formed a neat line to the left of their rakage. You already know Yujito and Samui. I have to say kid, if you are half as smooth as you are in your letters, I don't think there will be a problem honoring the treaty. Samui glared at her rakage. He insisted on reading all correspondence and said it was to protect Kumo's interests, but I honestly think the rakage is just an old perv. Her thoughts were loud and pronounced in her head. Not cool, rakage sama, was all she managed to say, though. AI bellowed out in full blow laughter. The letters and looks on the two kids' faces made him feel young again. Anyway, this knucklehead is Omoi and the feisty redhead is Karui. Naruto took in the appearance of Omoi. Relaxed posture like a younger version of Kakashi. White, short spiky hair with a sucker in his mouth. The katana on his back reminded him of something he wished to ask. Reikage sama I have a request of sorts. I would like your permission to give gifts to yourself and Team Yujito. I wish for those gifts to remain in their possession for as long as they live. Is this acceptable to you? AI looked like a kid the morning before Christmas. He nodded eagerly, wondering what the blonde had for him. Samui smiled kindly at Naruto while Omoi and Karui high-fived. Naruto proceeded to unseal his planned gifts. He honored the rakage first with a set of steel boxing gloves that were painted gold to match his wrist weights and belt. The gloves were sealed with an adjustable lightning seal to reduce their natural weight. If AI needed speed over power, he could reduce the weight of the gloves and vice versa. After Naruto explained his gift, the rakage did something none of his subordinates had seen him do before. He sped in front of Naruto, bent down, picked up the relatively small blonde in his massive arms and gave him a bone-crunching hug, literally. Team Yujito winced at the sound of bones popping and AI swiftly set Naruto down and inspected him. Naruto waved him off and placed a green glowing hand over his ribs. After AI apologized profusely and everyone wiped up their sweat drops, Naruto presented a gift to Yujito. Yujito, inside this scroll are instructions on how to temporarily release Matatabi. 
It includes a jutsu that is now unique to the hidden leaf. I give this to you on the condition that you agree not to share this knowledge with anyone other than Killer B. Rakage Sama, when you review the Treaty Review Paragraph 69 Clause C. If it is found that this knowledge was shared, it will be a violation of the treaty. Yujito nodded eagerly and then a chakra flare was felt around the room. Yujito's eyes turned blue with black cat-like sits. Naruto Uzumaki in Q, I wish to finish what was started on your last visit. I also wish to thank you for your generosity. That is all. Yujito returned to normal and reiterated what Matatabi said. Naruto then turned to Samui, Samui-chan, I have brought for you a sword from my ancestral clan. I give it to you in good faith, counting you as a future Uzumaki. The sword is forged of chakra metal and the edge of the blade is composed of metal that is highly conductive to lightning chakra. I present to you, Storm's Edge, it is the brother to my own blade. Naruto pulled out a long, 60-inch katana from a black scabbard with blue embossing. The blade was made of the same black metal as his, but the usual silver edge of a katana was replaced by an icy blue metal. It matched well with Samui's eyes. Samui pulled Naruto into a hug and said she would thank him later. Finally, he gave two standard-issue Uzumaki katanas to Karui and Omoi. The blades were well crafted and both hilts were wrapped in the standard red of the Uzumaki. Both blades adorned reinforcement seals and summoning seals. With nods from the two, Naruto's gift-giving ceremony ended. Naruto reiterated that the gifts were from him and not Konoha, to maintain impartiality before the new treaty was signed. AI thanked Naruto, gave him a message to pass on to the old man and bid them a safe trip. The other Kyumo team would arrive in three days. Naruto had all members of Team Yujito secure their packs and grab onto him. Karui and Samui each took one of Naruto's hands while Omoi and Yujito put a hand on each shoulder. There was a massive buildup of chakra before the group disappeared in a multicolored flash. Outside the Hokage's office, a flash was seen followed by three genin ninja dry heaving. Yujito looked a little green herself but managed to hold it together. After the group entered the Hokage's office, checked in and exchanged greetings, Naruto took Team Yujito to Ichiraku's and then to their rooms at the Golden Leaf Hotel. He promised to show them around the village tomorrow and let them get settled in for their stay. After returning home, Naruto could feel the exhaustion from the jump and passed out face first on his bed. The next day, Naruto met Team Yujito bright and early and began their tour of Konoha. He showed them the academy, the training ground that was dedicated for their use, the view from the top of the Hokage monument and ended at the Akimichi barbecue. The five of them were enjoying a nice chat over lunch when Team Ten rolled in. Ruto-kun squealed an excited Ino as she jumped over Omoi and glomped on to Naruto. Haya, Ino-chan. I haven't seen you since we became Genin. How are things? Naruto struggled to get the words out since Ino's hug was putting undue pressure on his trachea. It was boring for a while, but we have done a couple cranks already. Forget that Ruto, why are you eating with Kyumo Ninja? At this point the rest of Team 10 had meandered over. The look on Shikamaru's face said he would like to know why as well. Well, Ino-chan. I can't tell you until it becomes official. For now, they are my friends here to take the Chunin exams. Let me introduce you. Ino pouted on not getting in on the gossip. Naruto then introduced Team Yujito. Ino didn't miss the glances exchanged by Naruto and Samui. Ino briefly introduced herself before unceremoniously yanking Naruto out of the barbecue place and around the corner. Spill it, Ruto. I saw the looks between you and that blonde bimbo. The feeling of jealousy was oozing from Ino. Naruto found it endearing and a bit troublesome. Ino-chan, I can't tell you right now. Hokage labeled it in a rank secret until it is official. Samui-chan is nice. I think the two of you would get along. All I can tell you is I met her in Kumo, and she is my friend. 
When I am allowed to, I will tell you the whole story. Naruto said in a soft tone. His eyes seemed to soften as he said this. Naruto laughed at her pouty face. No fair, Ruto. At least tell me this, who do you like more? Me or her? Ino's pout was replaced by a fire in her eyes. Naruto knew he was in a pinch. This is the problem with having more than one girl. The slight hesitation of Naruto gave Ino the answer she needed. Ino-chan, you have been my friend since we were three. I cherish you and our friendship. Nothing will ever change that. You are one of the people I trust most in the world. I won't lie to you though, I do like Samui-chan. She is cool. Ino's determination rapidly transitioned to excitement and then depression. She had tried to tell Naruto exactly how she felt, but now it seems like it was too late. She gave Naruto a sullen, okay, before heading back to join her team. Samui didn't know how to feel. She knew Naruto was an amazingly cool guy and that she would eventually have to share him. However, she had never felt the pit in her stomach that she was currently experiencing. The feeling felt off to her, like she wanted to run after Naruto and pull him away from that blonde bimbo. Karui noticed her mood and gave her a reassuring squeeze on. Her forearm. This is not cool. We were having such a good day until that blonde bimbo showed up. Samui said in a quiet voice. What if that girl is an agent sent here to disrupt the treatise? Then she seduces Naruto to break the deal and Kyumo goes to war. Omoi's ramblings were cut off by a bonk to the head from Karui. Omoi, shut the hell up before I beat you into the ground. Can't you see you are not helping the situation? The two cast a sidelong glance at Samui and saw her eyes were icier than usual and looking down at the table. Sorry, Samui. Said a dejected Omoi. Karui cut in, look, Samui. You are in a rather unique position. If that blonde baka doesn't show you the appreciation you deserve, then I will deal. No. The solidity of the one-word statement startled Team Yujito. Naruto-kun hasn't done anything wrong. He is an amazing guy. That is how we got into this situation. Of course, there will be any number of girls throwing themselves at him. I will ask him when he returns. A couple minutes later, Ino walked through the door on the verge of tears. If only she knew Naruto was going to have to take multiple wives. Right now, she was thinking that Naruto was choosing somebody he barely knew over her. She went to join Team 10 and threw herself into Asuma's arms. Naruto followed Ino in and went to join Team Yujito. He had a sad look on his face and he seemed tired all of a sudden. Sorry about that. I haven't had time to explain what is going on to my peers. Samui-chan, this is all new to the both of us. All I will tell you is that Ino has been my friend since we were three and I believe she likes me romantically. I don't want this to change anything between us. At a nod and a tender look from Samui, he continued. That took a lot out of me. Feel free to explore the village. I need to go rest before picking up the IWA team tomorrow. Naruto said his goodbyes to the group and returned to the compound via Hiration. He got the chance to talk his problems out with Jiraiya later that night. Back with Team Yujito, the mood had dropped quite a bit. Yujito decided to try and address the issue. Naruto is in a unique and tough situation. I don't want to make it seem like he is devaluing you, Samui, but he was very forthright in saying that he was being encouraged to take multiple wives. I think he is struggling to maintain the promise he made. If he is who I think he is, he will rally and be okay. Samui hadn't had time to think about how Naruto was feeling. She was busy identifying and dealing with her own jealousy. Yujito's words made her realize how Naruto was feeling. She stood up from the booth, Yujito sensei I am going to go to his compound. I will be okay, I want to do this alone. 
she left the restaurant in search of the Namikaze compound. She didn't notice the three tails she picked up shortly after leaving the restaurant. Tsubaki knocked on Naruto's door and told him he had a visitor. Naruto broke off his internal dialogue with Kurama and went downstairs. When Naruto saw Samui, standing there in all her beauty, he gave her a weak smile and welcomed her. They walked up to Naruto's room. Samui cleared her throat and intertwined her hands behind her back. Look Naruto, it's cool. I know you will be seeing other girls. Jealousy is a new feeling to me, and I felt it for the first time in the restaurant. I know the road ahead will not be easy, but I like you. I want to give us a try. All I ask for in return is honesty. Naruto gave her a heartfelt smile, thanks, Samui-chan. It means a lot hearing you say that. I have never, and will never, lie to you. I struggle with this because I cannot tell my friends what is going on until after the Chunin exams. I felt Ino's pain when she saw us together and that hurt me. I have known her forever and I won't lie, I like her a lot. He sighed deeply and did his best to meet her eyes before continuing. Her and Hebeheim are the only two girls from Kanoha I like in that way. I feel greedy and dirty for even saying that. Every one of you is an amazing girl that all men is this world would kill for. You are smart, talented, beautiful, understanding and kind, Samui-chan. I want to show you how much your trust means to me. I just don't know how to do that and be true to my feelings for the others. Kami, I feel dirty just saying that. Naruto's pain was palpable to Samui. There is no doubt in her mind that he is being genuine. She appreciated that he could open up to her. How about we take it one step at a time then? We are friends now and we won't get married until I turn 16. That gives us time to figure this out. You may not believe you deserve the affection of multiple girls. She gave an awkward chuckle, you are right, it does feel weird talking about this. However, it doesn't change the fact that you are an amazing guy. It is up to the girls to decide if they wish to share. I believe in your promise to cherish me, even if there are others in the picture. So, let's just take things as they come, one step at a time. She planted a chaste kiss on Naruto's cheek and stood up to leave, her peace already said. Naruto stood up as well and pulled her into a hug, which earned a blush from Samui. Thank you so much, Samui-chan. I am lucky and grateful to have the opportunity to get to know you. I will keep my promise, so long as you let me. He walked Samui to the compound's gates and bid her goodbye. His talk with Jiraiya later that night would further strengthen his resolve. On a different note, it would also inspire Jiraiya's next book, Ika Ika, Trouble in Paradise. A distressed and irritable Ino Yamanaka walked into her parents' home that evening. She kicked off her sandals, skipped dinner and raced to her room. Inoichi hated seeing his princess upset and went to discover the cause. After a gentle knock on the door, he walked his way over to Ino's bed and sat down next to her. What's going on, princess? I'm. Sorry, daddy. I saw Ruto with a team of Kyomo ninja earlier and one of the girls was eyeing him. When I asked him about it, he said he couldn't tell me why. He also said that he didn't want to lie to me and that he liked her. Tears started falling as she spoke. Inoichi hated this. He knew exactly what was going on. He also knew of his daughter's affections for her fellow blonde. The only thing he didn't know was what he should do. On the one hand, he could just stay quiet and let Ino figure her way through this. She would find about Naruto's status and emerging harem soon enough. If this drives her away from Naruto, then his daughter could move on and eventually, much later, find a man that she wouldn't have to share. That thought appealed to him for more than a few brain cycles. However, his daughter was in pain. She was a thirteen-year-old young woman and Inoichi believed she could handle the truth and come to her own decisions. Naruto was a good kid, he had known that from the day he had met him. With a sigh, 
Inoichi explained the official side of Naruto's situation and made Ino promise not to talk about it until things were announced. He knew he did the right thing, but nothing could prepare him for deep pit of sorrow that emerged in his chest from her response. Oh, the woes of being a father to a beautiful young woman. With a, thank you, daddy, and a big hug, Ino simultaneously filled and crushed Inoichi's heart. The following day Naruto flashed off to Iwagakor. He showed up in Anoki's office in a bright yellow flash. There was twice as many guards as the last time he visited, so he held his hands up in the universal sign for, I come in peace. It took almost a full minute for the tension in the room to disperse and the shock to fade. 24 IWA Ninja just got confirmation that this boy could perform the most feared jutsu in the elemental nations. With a wave of his hand, Anoki told his forces to stand down. This boy really will give him a heart attack. Kuratsuchi was standing next to her grandfather talking to him about taking his hat when the flash went off. She recognized the blonde from pictures he had sent in his letters. Over the three or so months they had been writing each other, she will admit that she started having feelings for the boy now standing in front of her. She didn't know exactly what those feelings were, but she did feel the butterflies in her stomach attempting to escape. Naruto knew he was in hostile territory, alone except for Kurama. The feeling in the room was a mix of fear, incredulity, and shock with just a dash of hostility. He saw a tomboyish, yet beautiful girl standing next to Anoki. She had short, black hair with her hishiate covering her forehead. She wore a one-armed, red battle kimono that covered the length of her left arm but stopped at her right shoulder. The battle kimono extended down to her right knee, but the left leg was uncovered. She was wearing red combat shorts that extended to mid-thigh. The rest of her legs were wrapped in mesh wiring that continued down to her combat sandals. Her overall look was fierce yet refined. Sexiness with a promise of pain. She was a lot like Enko in that way. She strolled up to Naruto and held out her hand. She was already transfixed by the depth of his azure blues, the shiny golden blonde locks of hair and his devilishly handsome face. Anoki noticed the blush creep upon Kuratsuchi's face, it was the first time he had seen her show any interest in a boy. Naruto took Kuratsuchi's hand and placed a gentle kiss on the backside of it. Her blush turned crimson and Anoki cut it to save her from passing out. Naruto-kun, thank you for coming to escort Team Akatsuchi. I have really enjoyed your letters, my boy. They were more interesting than some of your godfathers' books. Anoki paused here and let out a hearty laugh when Naruto made a joke about all Kage being perverted old goats. You have already met Kuratsuchi, the other you lady is Mirai, and the boy is Suruji. This is my oldest grandson, Akatsuchi, he said as he pointed to the mountain of a man with a dorky looking face and Anoki's massive nose. All shinobi present are dressed in the standard IWA red, gray, and brown uniforms. They all bowed slightly in greeting to Naruto, who returned the gesture. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Anoki Jiai-san, thank you for having me. Kuro-chan, it's great to finally meet you in person. The brilliant gigawatt smile lit up the room. Anoki couldn't help but smile in return. The strange yet comforting feeling of serenity washed over him and reaffirmed his decision for him. The rest of the room caught the familiarity the blonde addressed their kage with and didn't know how to respond. After a hearty chuckle, Anoki matched Naruto's familiarity. It is good to see you again, Naruto-kun. Thank you for dealing with that problem in wave for me. I am grateful for the discretion you exercised. I wish you to pass this letter to the old monkey. It contains our itinerary and list of escorts that I will bring with me to Kanoha. This scroll contains your payment for the missing Nin. Is there anything you wish to discuss before you depart? Yes, Tsuchikich sama I wish to offer you and Team Akatsuchi a gift as gratitude for placing your trust in me. Is that all right with you? At the Tsuchikich's nod, Naruto pulled out a scroll and four items popped into Naruto's hands. First, Tsuchikich-sama. 
I made this custom belt for you. It has a couple of seals on it. The belt will mainly help support your back and alleviate your back pain. It also has a couple of empty storage seals so that you will no longer have to carry your luggage. A golem guard came and inspected the belt. He placed it on his waist, and it grew to fit him. He activated the seals on the belt. The sigh of pleasure that escaped his mask made him immediately bow in apology to his leader. The Tsuchikage growled and held out his hand for the belt. After he applied it, he sighed in content. This is a most thoughtful and generous gift, Naruto-kun. You have my thanks. Naruto nodded and the walked over to Kuratsuchi, he pulled out a necklace with a beautiful ruby embedded in the likeness of a mountain. I have put a Hiration marker in the necklace. I cannot flash to it unless you channel chakra. There is also a barrier seal in it that you can activate in case of emergencies. You mentioned in your letter how you lost your mother's necklace, so I thought you may like another one. Naruto's normal confidence was absent this statement. He really hoped that she liked it. When she squealed in excitement and turned around so he could put it on, he felt a wave of relief wash over him. He gave the other team members some tactical belts equipped with a few of his flash and explosive tags. It made a very good impression on Team Akatsuchi. They paid their respect to Anoki before securing their equipment and putting a hand on Naruto. They all felt the buildup of chakra before experiencing a twisting in their gut. It should be noted that the group variant of the Hiration is not a pleasant experience. The IWA team showed up outside the Hokage's office in much the same way the Kumo team did. After recovering, greeting the Hokage and escorting them to the Golden Leaf, Naruto once again returned to the compound exhausted. The next day, two days before the Chunin exams, Naruto was showing Kuratsuchi and her friends around Konoha. Kuratsuchi loved walking through the Higarashi weapon shop, which Naruto was part owner of. She saw the seal and tag section labeled Uzumaki and got a nod from Naruto in confirmation at her silent question. Naruto had partnered with Tenten's dad, Hayoto, in the same way he partnered with Ichirakus. Hayoto took his interest-free loan to expand the shop a bit, get higher quality metal and he hired an extra helper to make up for Tenten's absence. He also got discounted rates on Naruto's seals, which sold like hot cakes. They were just coming out of the Higarashi weapon shop when Naruto heard a gruff voice call out to him. Hey there, Gaki. You still owe me a fight. Naruto turned and saw the demon of the hidden mist walking in front of a small group of mist ninja. Naruto's smile grew when he noticed Haku pop out from behind a beautiful woman with long red hair that covered on side of her face. She wore an elegant, blue dress that exposed a healthy amount of her cleavage. The slit in the dress showed of the woman's long, toned legs. The woman was the image of refined beauty. Zabuza-san, I didn't expect you to be here. Is the rebellion over already or are you here for some reinforcements? Naruto replied with a cocky smirk. He gave a smile and a nod to Haku, who blushed and disappeared behind the woman in blue. Care to introduce me to you friend, Zabuza-kun? The woman in blue called out to Zabuza in a melodic voice. Ha, huh, sorry, Mei-chan. Zabuza said while rubbing the back of his neck in a Naruto-ish manner. This here is the Gaki I told you about, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Naruto, this is Mei Terumi, the new Mizukage and my girlfriend. Naruto appeared in front of Zabuza and gave him a fist bump. Well done, Zabuza. Mizukage sama it is an honor to meet you. As Zabuza said, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I am relieved to see the mist is in safe hands. He gave a polite bow to the Mizukage. A seductive smile graced Mei's lips, my, my, quite the charmer we have here. Zabuza told me about your contribution to our efforts and the defeat of Gato. Simply defeating Gato helped our efforts immensely. You other contribution helped us muster a final push and here we are. I wanted to bring a team to the exams and start a new era for Kiri. 
By the way, Naruto-kun, I have my reply to your letter as well. You will receive it if you make it to the final stage of the exams. I do hope you will not disappoint. Kuratsuchi caught her teasing tone and hidden meaning. Um, Naruto. What letter is she talking about? Well, Kuratsuchi-chan. I gave Zabuza a couple letters like I did with your grandpa. I didn't know that I would get such a quick reply though. He said sheepishly before he returned to looking at Mei, I am glad everything worked for you, Mei-sama. I will see you at the finals then. With a round of farewells and see you laters, Naruto led the IWA team back to the hotel and to their room. Naruto asked Kuratsuchi to talk alone. Now, Naruto sits alone with Kuratsuchi in the hotel's cafe. Kuro-chan, I wanted to talk to you about something. In my efforts to spread peace, I have made offers of marriage on behalf of Kanoha to Kyumo and Kiri. Kiri was just a shot in the dark. I met Zabuza in Wave Country and knew he was going to return to support the Kiri rebellion. I gave intro letters there in hopes to smooth out relations with Kiri. I have written to you about Samui from Kumo, and I really do believe you two will get along. He offered a nervous smile. She nodded to him, and her lips were pursed. The confused look on her face showed that she didn't know where Naruto was going with this. Yes, I knew about Samui. Are there others as well? You are scaring me, Naruto-kun. Naruto put on a brave face and took her hand in his. I am still trying to figure this out myself. I am feeling dirty. Right now, there are four girls that hold a piece of my heart. You, Samui, Anko and recently my childhood friend made her feelings known to me. Each and every one of you are amazing and deserve the world. I wish I could tell you that I will give you all my love, but the truth is that you will need to share it. He crossed his fingers and four shadow clones popped up. I have no doubt that I can spend time with each of you. I have no doubt that I will treat you like the princess you are. I have no doubt, should you accept my love, that I will make you happy. However, I feel dirty for even asking you to share my love. If you are not satisfied with me, Kuro-chan, I will ask. The Hokage to honor the treaty and you may find somebody better for you here in Kanoha. The desperate determination in his statement rattled Kuratsuchi a bit. A tornado of thoughts was tearing through her mind. She knew that she would have to share him eventually and he had told her about Samui from Kyumo. How she was in a similar position to herself, and how Naruto enjoyed writing to them both. She was in a daze from finding out there were two, potentially three more. In a strange way, it made sense to her, this boy was amazing. Any girl would be lucky to have him. Unfortunately, his aspirations have put him in a position that he will take multiple wives. Kami, this is complicated and going nowhere. The emotions couldn't be contained and continued to change the look on her face in rapid succession. Naruto squeezed her hand after letting her process for a couple of minutes. Kuro-chan, I am sorry for putting you in this position. I promise to always be forthright with you. I don't expect an answer now. I know I am asking a lot of you. All I can ask is to have faith in me and I won't let you down. Take some time to think about it and I will await your answer. He placed a chaste kiss on her cheek and walked out of the cafe. Kuratsuchi sat there and finished her coffee before returning to her room. She would need some time to think this over. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.